All right, I got, I got one more warm up question uh, before we get things started, because um, mm-hmm. uh, I realized that everyone, everyone is is part of a. a uh, actually, I'm sorry. I realize that you three are part of a podcast duo. I'm, I think I'm, I think I might. I think it's safe to say I might be one of the very few comic podcasters that got like three, four freaking hosts, right? So I I, I was curious if um, when, when you guys guest on other podcasts solo, like you're doing today. Do do your co-hosts verbally abuse you or cause you psychological harm like mine do, or, or is it just uh, or is it just a unique thing for me? I'm uh, gonna say the, yes. The, mine, yeah, mine. <laughs> it's just like, oh, where was it? I, like it's a constant running joke uh, between me and Jesus because uh, I am quote unquote chair A, and mm-hmm. he always makes jokes about being chair A or he's chair B, so he doesn't get invited to stuff. I was like, that's not true at all. You get invited all the time. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's humorous. We joked about this earlier today. So what, okay. what we're doing now, <laughs> Chris, whatever you, how, how does Aaron react? Uh, I told him earlier, cause we, we usually do our Patreon exclusive, uh, shows each Tuesday night. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Hey, I can't be there tonight because we are short doing, doing a calling. thing with everybody. Yeah, exactly. The short yeah. box called and I answered and, uh, he was, he was a little like, Oh, okay. But <laughs> so here's the difference between here's the difference between my relationship with Aaron and I'm guessing your relationship with everybody else is that Aaron is fully aware that the Oblivion Bar is 99.8 percent me. So when I want to do a thing, he just is like, okay, like he's just along for the ride, and I think he's totally fine with that. He's accepted at this point. He's given me 100 percent creative control, and I love him for it. It can get kind of frustrating when you're trying to do everything all the time. Yeah. But on the other hand, he knows that. If he like if he tried to get involved somehow or make a TikTok video, I would just like grind my teeth and be like, "Good job, buddy, way to go." <laughs> yeah. But let I me tell it, you but... all one thousand things you did wrong that aren't up <laughs> exactly. to brand, you know? <laughs> yeah. So if you guys love you. and or hate anything with the Oblivion Bar, yeah. it's my fault. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think my crew like understands like, oh, Bobby's going to take lead, but um, and we appreciate him for it. But let's also bust his balls every single chance mm-hmm. we get and uh, kill him a thousand small cuts. Uh, well, actually, they're more like <laughs> giant gaping holes, you know, where my um, <laughs> ego and pride leak out constantly. But I love them, you know? Uh, Lance, what about you? Uh, I feel like Chris is so busy with 900 other projects, he doesn't care what I do. <laughs> He's like, keep it alive. Keep the ship yes. sailing, Lance. <laughs> keep well, because I did. Like, for I don't know how many months when he was do- when he was DMing for the that uh, Night of the Rolled Table podcast. And he was editing it too. And on top of working a full-time job and having two kids and doing his uh, Patreon Dungeon Heads art thing that he was doing. And like, I, I like the podcast would have stopped if I didn't keep bringing like you guys on. Like the yeah. podcast is going because I was able to bring all you guys on and kept motivating me because it was super fun to to have everyone come over and get to know everyone a lot more. That wouldn't have, that probably would not have happened if Chris or like consistently there Mm -hmm. and so now the show kind of turned into okay well it's way too much work to prep everything for a character breakdown on my own so we're gonna switch up format and so that's when all those other formats started because i was like i can't do this weekly and read all these books and prep all this it was too much so 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 in short comic book keepers powered by nerdum and uh friends online thankfully yes Mm -hmm. there we go Mm-hmm. Dang, this uh, this kind of um, I didn't know I needed this. This kind of became like a, a self help group for podcast duos <laughs> and podcast uh, uh, like hosts and stuff. I needed. How that. long did you edit this week, everyone? Now let's go around and talk to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of my questions uh, that we'll get to is how many hours in total do you think that you've edited this year? Because oh, I started God. doing the math on mine, where I'm oh. like, well, it takes me anywhere between four to eight hours at the most for post, and I mean, I put out. 40 episodes so whatever that math is i'm like damn that's a lot of life i could have done other really good things with. <laughs> i could have made a change in the world Jeez. i'm gonna do the okay. math on that too yeah that's so I, I think we started i think we started with episode 61 this year and we're currently we'll be ending the year on episode 105 so and that's not including patreon which is well over 50 episodes as well i agree Jeez. with you botter it is round it's roughly around five oh to seven my hours God. i didn't even think about the patreon episodes yeah. Oh yeah, no, which I, which I barely definitely. edit to be fair. Like I basically just put yeah. them out. Like I, I'll put the the intro and the outro, and that's about yeah. it. Because that's funny uh, you bring that up. Because I was thinking like, patrons are people that love your show enough to pay something, right? And my attitude when it comes to editing is, 
if these people love this show enough to pay, then they will love me for who I am. You know, no edits. You can let no your hair cuts. down. <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. So I love our patrons for that. Re- a big part of that reason why I love our patron subscribers is for that reason alone. You guys save me so much time in editing. But it's these, it's these freebie listeners, right? I'm like, damn, I got to come correct. I got to <laughs> edit out this curse word. I can't get canceled. You know, all this stuff. So six, How many hours sentences can I start with? Um... <laughs> Oh my God! Literally, that should have been the next question: Is how many oh, ums have I edited out from both Aaron and I? Uh, I, I? I actually I thought about making a T-shirt, just a black T-shirt with the white um, <laughs> like uh, shape. Everyone knows an yeah. um when you see it in audition or audacity, wherever you edit. I just want to do that you. and just put that on a T-shirt and see how many people buy it. That's I funny. can pull it out of a yes when I edit. Uh, my problem is uh not um but same thing i can seriously see on the timeline i was like there's one i just like it is i'm actually really fast now it's like click drag Mm -hmm. click drag go yeah Uh, i can do that my mutant power is being able to uh visually see sound i can just see what (laughs) um looks like you know visually he sees the matrix (laughs) the the um tricks That's That's good. All right, you know, I got an idea for a Patreon bonus episode uh, another day, and that's just going to be podcast host self group chat. That's what it's going to be. That's just airing out our grievances. We get together biannually and just talk about what our co-hosts are doing wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Chris and I did this via text one time, and we We literally just were like, "Can you believe that Jesus did this?" And Aaron, what an (laughs) idiot! Yeah, that's funny. That is funny. (laughs) Like. I got look if if and when you should guys should listen to um, our holiday special. It was the first time a whole crew's been here in the studio together, and I loved it. I loved seeing them. It's been almost a year. The energy, but when I say editing was a fucking nightmare, only because we're so close. It's like oh, the mic bleed is so bad. <laughs> Stay home. Let one me of the one of the you. worst things that has ever happened in the Oblivion Bar history. <laughs> I know what you're is <laughs> episode sixty, which was our the Batman. Uh, yes. review. It was one of only two times that Aaron and I have been together and we were so excited about it. We had a great conversation. I'm still really proud of oh, the yeah. episode and, and what we were able to put together. We're magic when we're in person. It's just unfortunate that we've only done it twice. But like getting home after coming home from Tennessee where he lives and editing it that night and, and realizing that we were bleeding into each other's audio the entire oh, yeah. time was one of the most defeating feelings <laughs> I've ever had in the podcasting world. I, I literally well. was like, oh my God. And I had to like YouTube... For like four hours, at, you know, filters and shit on audition. I was mm-hmm. like, oh my god, no! Like this is this is going to completely ruin the episode. And I and I listen to it to this day, and it I get cringes from listening to it now because of how bad it sounds. Chris, uh, and, but again, and, I'm sorry, good. I'm jumping here real quick and say I've had plenty of those episodes, and you know what it is, man? It's you personally notice that stuff, but your average listener don't give a shit. They probably didn't hear. <laughs> a quarter of the things you caught on your own yeah yeah it, com- it comes not. from just being you know it comes from being really in love with what you put out and, and having that sense mm. of pride and just being so fucking close to it you know mm. yeah you're like that episode when i listened to it after like a minute it didn't like you don't you care just don't pay attention anymore because like, your, yeah. your, your brain filters good. it out i didn't even hear it after that yeah Oh, well, it's good to hear I, that, definitely, As, especially from a fellow podcaster, because I know for me, I, when I, I've gone back and listened to it a couple times, because Aaron loves that episode, because again, mm-hmm. we're together, uh, and I'm like, man, if only I could just figure out a way to like get the original audio and, and just make it, that is my biggest thing, I'm sorry not to go on a rant too hard here, but with the Oblivion Bar, above all else, production value, like I want our show to sound good, above right. all else, right, and that's like the biggest thing, and like even when I had Christian Ward on the show a couple months ago, I, for, I, I don't know how it happened, but my mic turned a certain way, and this plug-in right here unplugged. Didn't know it until after the interview. It was just recording mm. through my computer, and I was so upset. But yep. that's how it goes sometimes. That's our static episode, and I'm mm. so bummed because that's probably the most fun I've had researching because I found out like all this interesting info, and then I listened back, and I went through my computer instead of the mic, and I died on the inside. <laughs> That is that is the best way to describe it. It's a little piece of yourself. Yeah, is this gone? Really... A piece of me yeah. is dead, and yeah. it's because of my stupid mic. Oh man, this really has become a self help group. I love it. Patreon subscribers, I hope you enjoy this extended uh, uh, edition <laughs> of this episode. I'm, I'm gonna leave all of this in for the patrons. All right, but gents, how about we go ahead and get started 
on the show. Let's go ahead and welcome the listeners into our world. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Yo, Short Box Nation. Welcome back to the podcast. How are you doing today? I hope you're feeling good. I hope you're feeling great. I hope your Christmas was one for the books. I got way too many pajamas that, that don't fit like the usual, and I got a bunch of bland socks this year. So either I pissed off Santa or my mom finally listened to the show and decided to uh, get her revenge that way. We'll never know. But anyways, I hope you're ready to see the new year out the door, all right? It's time to say goodbye to 2022. Get the hell out of here. We're done, all right? We, we're moving on to the better and greener pastures, all right? But before we give the, the you know, 2022 the official boot, I'd like to revisit the best of what it had to offer for comic fans, moviegoers, and nerds alike. To all of our new friends tuning in for the first time, my name is Botter. Welcome to the Short Box Podcast, the comic review and talk show where you hear the best conversations about comic books and the pop culture they inspire. This is episode 376, a.k.a. the last Short Box episode of 2022. Today's entire focus is going to be about spotlighting the best comics, the best movies, and just overall the best pop culture entertainment that made this year worthwhile. Now, I'm kind of riding solo today, as you could tell, because I got through this intro so far with no interruptions, uh, no fart jokes, no attacks on my personal character or looks. Um, so my crew isn't here with me, all right? Say as our Ed and Ashley um, are absent from this episode. If you listen to last week's holiday special, you know I hosted a full house, all right? Everyone was here in person here at the Shortbox Studio, um, and we celebrated, uh, we celebrated a little too hard that day, all right? We, we had a lot to drink. Uh, and I think some of us are still recovering from the Christmas party. So while they're recovering and using the, the only PTO they got, which is four hours that they get all year, I decided to enlist the help of some friends of mine who are no strangers to this podcast thing that we do so well. The panel and co-hosts I've assembled today are some of the best comic podcasters putting out content today. In some instances, I was able to bribe one or two of them to let me come on their show earlier this year, all right? One of them was on uh, the, the show on the short box last year. But the one thing they all have in common is that I'm lucky enough to call them colleagues and friends. Think of today's squad as uh, like the Justice League or the Avengers of, of comic podcasts, right? Imagine if, if Batman, Tony Stark, Swamp Thing, and The Creeper were all on a podcast. I feel like that's a Tom King comic book waiting to happen the more I think about it. But this is even better than that, all right? Here is your panel today, Short Box Nation. <clears throat> On mic number two, calling in from St. Louis, Missouri, is one half of the Oblivion Bar podcast. I thought I knew a thing or two about comics until I met this guy, all right? Technically, he's, he's already made his Short Box debut back in episode 337 when we announced the comic podcast crossover event, Unite the Seven. Let's welcome back to the show, Chris Hacker. Yo, Chris, how Yo. are you doing, buddy? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I had to Aaron steal your intro time. there. <laughs> ah, I like it, dude. Well, thank you so much, Botter, for bringing me back. Man, I am excited to talk about 2022 and uh, all the cool things that happened, like you said, ready to get out of it, honestly, for being real. But at the same time, <laughs> Uh, I would like to reflect and at least think about some of the great things. There was there was a lot of cool stuff that came out, whether it be comics, movies, television, video games, all the stuff. So I'm excited to talk all about right. it. And again, thank you so much for having me back here. No, my pleasure, man. Thank you. All right, next up on mic number three, calling in from San Diego, California, is a writer and reviewer for The Geekly Grind. He's also one half of the comic podcast, Comic Book Keepers. And according to his Twitter bio, he's also... Half Orc Eldritch Knight. I believe that's on his mother's side. I'll let him tell you, all right? Shortbox Nation, I present to you Lance. What up, Lance? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Botter? Happy to be here. Excited to talk all things nerdy. Ready to be done with 2022. Uh, which, which one of us is the creeper? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I take full credit. I, I, I will, I'm definitely the creeper of this group right here, all right? Swamp Thing called I it think Shotgun. Dibs. Okay. I knew that I, was I, coming. I was going to give Swamp Thing to Jake because the whole spec tales and the horror part. Uh, <laughs> you and Lance, Chris, uh, are kind of like the, the two suave dudes over here. So Batman and Tony Stark. But I'm definitely the fucking creeper. Have you seen me like smile and like, I'm, I'm fucking weird. All right. All right. And speaking of our fourth, uh, uh, our fourth chair, last but not least, controlling mic number four all the way from Wahoo, Nebraska, is one of the hosts of my new favorite comic podcast, Spec Tales. It's the show that asks collectors... And creators, what's your grail tale? 
Let's welcome Jake Hull to the show. What up, Jake? How are you doing, man? Hey, thank you very much for having me. Uh, Chris, I have to tell you, I was being silent. I wanted to yell out that I get to be Swamp Thing. I wanted to scream it from the top of my lungs. But I hadn't been introduced yet, and I think that you used your early intro to your advantage, uh, unfortunately, for me. So, you got to be but quicker it, than Thank that. you so much for letting <laughs> me be here and not be Swamp Thing, I guess, in this case. <laughs> All right, I like it. Uh, you know, the, the competition's already set, right? A little friction never hurt a pod. It makes it only better. I, I tend right. to bring too much competition to podcasts, and I'm not even sure why, but it's become a thing even on Spectales where Jesus and I, at the end of every episode, nearly every episode, I usually say who won, uh, like the segment or the episodes. Mm -hmm. And so far, Jesus has never won yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jake remains undefeated. <laughs> I just want to quickly point out as well, I want to go down a quick rap, just like a quick hole. There's a quick hole here, Jake. So yes, of course, the Spectales is kind of, it emulates the EC horror comics of the 60s and 70s. And of course, it would seem like the natural choice for Swamp Thing. But I will say as the Oblivion Bar, which is a interdimensional bar in the DC universe where a lot of the mm. horror characters hang out, uh, I think we could probably coexist and uh, I'll be Swamp, you be Thing. How about that? Or you can be swamping, I'll be Al Collin. One of the two. We'll we'll figure out a way to split it. Would it be possible for Man Thing to just randomly be a part of this? Because you <laughs> yeah, can be Swamp a, Thing, a, and I'll take Man Thing. Yeah, he, he's fair. a regular. He's a regular. Anytime Swamp Thing can't show up, you know, distant cousins. Yeah, exactly. This Correct. is like the most. This is probably the, the nerdiest gentleman uh, debate, or you know, uh, yeah, debate I've ever heard. No, 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 good sir. I will be Swamp Thing. No, no, no. I think I believe. Uh, due to my show's name. This is great. I love it already, man. So that leaves me with both Batman and Iron Man. So I'm just yes. a sad billionaire orphan. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Iron well, Bat. you had a drinking problem. You had a drinking problem. So, I mean, you got that to look oh, forward good. to. Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, Short Box Nation, I, I want to give... One reminder, one, one announcement, I won't make this long at all, but this is to all of our listeners who are either part of our Patreon community or thinking about joining soon, right? Maybe you got your finger on the trigger and you're like, you know what, come the new year, I'm going to be more fan financially smart, so I'm going to spend money on the Short Box Podcast, which is probably the best thing you could do as far as New Year, new year resolutions. By the time this episode airs, you'll only have a couple more days to vote in the poll that will decide the topic for one of the first episodes that we'll be recording for the new year. We're going to shine a spotlight on one famous comic strip and its creator. So we're asking our patrons to vote on choices like Peanuts, Calvin and Hobbes, and a personal favorite of mine, Zitz, which I feel like doesn't get talked about much. So you can go ahead and have your voice heard. You can take part in that episode voting topic, as well as all of our episode uh, voting polls and, and topics by joining our Patreon community, right? That's the best way to level up your short box listening experience. If you think the free episodes and the weekly ones are, are, are great, wait till you get access to, you know, the over 50 bonus episodes and all the different special perks and rewards that we have available to our Patreon community. Click the link in this episode's show notes or visit shortboxjacks.com to join. Uh, Chris, uh, Jake, and Lance, have you guys ever done an episode about, like, comic strips? No. No, I have like, not. Like the Sunday Funnies? Yeah, one day I was uh, I was watching this Calvin and Hobbes um, documentary about Bill uh, Watterson, and it got me thinking, like, how would we... I, I, yo, I used to love the Sunday funnies. I mean, my grandpa would give me uh, that page uh, every time he got the, the paper. And honestly, that was probably, like, as I was getting into comics, I was really getting into... I was really just into um, the Sunday funnies. Zitz, uh, um, Boondocks uh, was, was then, Garfield and all that. So it, it just got me thinking, like, damn, we've done over 370 episodes and we've rarely ever touched on comic strips, which, you know, that is a very uh, unique and, um, you know, it's like the cousin, if not brothers uh, of, you know, what we think of uh, as comic books. Yeah, I think that if we were ever going to cover any comic strip, the obvious answer is probably going to be like Calvin and Hobbes. Exactly. That seems to be I think it's like the best. I think that's right? winning the poll. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's I think it's like uh, it's it's not a landslide victory like I thought, because at first I was like, why am I even? Giving, making this an option. Calvin and Hobbes is going <laughs> to fucking win. What am I doing? But surprisingly, well, there's some votes for peanuts and zits. The interesting thing is that I'm actually from, I'm from Indiana originally. And uh, Jim Davis, who cr was the creator of Garfield, he's from Marion, Indiana, which is only about an hour away. And I feel like hmm. every time I travel that area, you just see Garfield everywhere. And I, I think huh. for some, somewhere in my, you know, my lizard brain, 
my I just I stay away from Garfield. There's some kind of weird connection. I don't know what it is, but ever since ever since I was a kid, I just I can't look at Garfield or watch the show or even like the terrible live action movies that came out a couple of years ago. I can't watch any of it. Oversaturation, man. Same. I, I <laughs> felt like I read way too many Garfield comics. He was also like really big in the nineties, so mm -hmm. um yeah, that's the only reason I didn't pick him. So I'm looking forward to doing something a little different, switching things up next year. So uh listeners, check out the Patreon if you're interested in that. Uh, but with the intro and the the charity pitch out the way, let's take a look into uh, let's take a look in the rearview mirror one more time through the lens of the diehard comic fans that we all are, and let's tip our hats to the comics, movies, and pop culture that made 2022 worth it. Now, I probably don't have to say this, but I'm going to preface it anyways. The list that you're about to hear, the different list that you're about to hear, come highly subjective. Duh. There's no way, you know, they're in no way meant to be a definitive list. We're not making one giant list that we all approve on. But really, these lists that we're about to share are an expression of the media that uh, impressed us and, you know, really left a mark with us. So these are very personal lists uh, in nature. Now, uh, Chris, Jake, and Lance, I, I want to hear in, in, in that order uh, just one kind of caveat. I want to hear, like, as far as, like, this qualifying uh, question I was kind of tossing around in my head, but... As far and we'll start with comics, and on the topic of that, do you guys would you guys consider when you're putting like these lists together, if a comic came out last year, let's say like issue one and two came out last year, but it carried over into the following year, let's say like a limited series, right? Eight issues, first two issues came out the previous year, the rest of the issues came out this year. Do you guys still put that on your like your current year list, or is that like a book that you're like, nah, it came out 2021, I that's for 2021? I think that. A lot of times you can kind of consider it. I always like to use my gauge from the Eisners, for instance. Like if it was mm. in in the running for a 2022 Eisner, regardless of okay. whether issues came out in 2021 or not, I still consider that a 2022 comic, right? So, uh, and and to, you said comic specifically, but I also want to kind of preface, like for instance, Spider Man No Way Home. I didn't put that on any of my list, even though it was well in theaters into like May. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't put it on my favorite yeah, superhero movie of the year because it came out December, baby. December 21st, I think is when yep. it came out last year. So, uh, yeah. So I, to kind of speak on that, yeah, I kind of, it varies, but I will say, you know, for comic side, if it was part of the Eisner's this year at San Diego, that was kind of like my cutoff. I didn't even think about that as a qualifying thing. That's pretty, that's, that's really neat. What about you, Lance? Uh, mine would just be probably if the majority of the issues came out in that year, I would consider it to be within that year. I'm not going to consider a comic to be a 2021 comic if it drops in December of mm -hmm. that year, because the majority of it's going to be in a different year. Like one comic that I'm very excited about that's about to drop in just a week at this point. But we're going to get into our what we're looking forward to later. But there is like, like, I don't consider that a 2021 book. Fair enough. Fair enough. Jake, you got anything to say about that? Well, the, the Eisner thing is brilliant, Chris. I need to apply that because I was actually struggling with something very similar for this uh, this list. I'm terrible at lists to begin with. I'll start with that. I, I don't, I'll don't. i make a list <laughs> and by the end of it, like I'll start with one and then I'll get to D somehow and I don't know how I did it. Uh, but the <laughs> the with this, I went with specifically for one of the, the books on my list, a majority of the issues came out this year. So I included it on the list even though a couple of them although i was going to ask you guys if that was allowed but it sounds like i don't need your permission <laughs> <laughs> hell no you don't jake nope. you grown man yeah you got it um and uh in, in true sneaky botter fashion the only reason i brought it up is because i think a few items on my list i was like <laughs> i mean technically i mean kind of kind of a stretch here uh but it sounds like we're all, all on all on the same page i guess i think you know i think about how Saga has been on, you know, best of comic list for years now. And I'm, I, I feel a way sometimes about it where I'm like, I mean, yeah, I get it. You know, it's, it's been going strong. I, it, granted, if you subtract the, um, you know, the year long sometime breaks and stuff. But at some point you're like, God damn it, this book came out when I was like in 2012, right? Like how much more are we going to continue putting it on these lists? Yes, it's a great comic, but every fucking year. It's oh, very man. unsexy to like, champion saga anymore everyone knows it's amazing right uh you yeah, know yeah. and like you said it came back in 2022 but mm -hmm. it's not a comic from 2022 you know and i thought about <laughs> it to kind of speak i guess great minds think alike because there was a second yeah. where i was like it would be 
I feel like Saga deserves some mention in terms of being one of the best comics because we're on issue 56 and it's still yeah. one of the best comics out. Imagine there aren't many comics out there, many series out there that a comic into issue 56 has been continually without fail. One of the best comics on the shelves For every sure. single time it comes out on the shelves. So I, I agree with you 100%. I thought about it for a moment, but then we, again, we're kind of all thinking the same thing. Probably not in the running for 2022. Fair enough. Well said, well said. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and just, uh, let's go ahead and dive into our first, uh, uh, you know, best of year uh, list, which is, I want to know what has been your favorite comic released this year? And I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's have Lance uh, kick us off. Uh, if anyone has been listening to our show at all recently, you will not be surprised by this answer, and that's Do a Powerbomb from Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer. Nice. This series reignited a love of wrestling for me. Uh, it made me want to return to uh, drawing again, just oh, wow. of, of just like how much I used to enjoy it and, and just seeing like the line work that uh, Daniel does and just... It's so good. The action is phenomenal, but the thing that impacts me the most from the story is the emotional gut punches that you get with all of his work. This story is about family and loss and uh, kind of bridging gaps in relationships, coming together and throw that into a pro wrestling tournament with a necromancer that's going to bring back a love from from the grave. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting story. So that's my pick for comic of the year. Hell yeah. Well said. Very poignant. Awesome. Awesome pick, Lance. All right, Jake, I'm going to go to you. I'm going to go with one, and I, I, I got to touch back on do a powerbomb. Lance, I've been meaning to tell you, I, I finished it. Yeah. And God, The last page. You, I, yeah, I should have got there sooner. <laughs> I should have read this way sooner. Yep. I, hmm. I appreciate you constantly telling me and beating me over the head, both through your podcast and via text message. Yes. That I need to read it because I did and I loved it. However, I didn't select that as my favorite comic of the year. This one, man, Dark Horse came out of nowhere for me and just leveled me, both visually and engaging with its story. I'm going with Animal Castle hmm. uh, from Ablaze is the publisher. This was something that... I didn't know it was coming. I didn't even, like, I saw it on the shelf, and the cover made me go, okay, I'll buy that. Like, alone from the cover, I was, I picked it up, and as soon as I picked it up, I was, I knew I was going to buy it. But it turned out that it, it was phenomenal. So, issues one through five are out, and it's a, it's an ending that, it doesn't finish the story. There is more coming, but I don't know exactly when, and it, I, I still Google when is it coming out because <laughs> it's got me that hooked. Uh, writer is Xavier Dorison and the artist is Felix Dillette. Nice. You, you looks like there's me. a uh, – sorry, that, not to interrupt here. It looks like there's a free comic book day issue, like a return issue for volume two in April oh, wow. 2023. So there you go. There's your there's your intro back into the Animal Castle, Castle universe. God, thank you know God. what the best part of – you know what the best part of podding with uh, other podcast hosts is everyone is on their shit. Everyone immediately went on Google and like <laughs> typed in like, let's help Jake out. When is volume two coming out? I'll hack the Twitter account. Yeah. No, oh, and, uh, and the hardcover uh, for Animal Castle volume one comes out December 23rd. Just FYI. <laughs> I, I, I nice. did know that actually. Cool. Hey, Zeus, and if you're listening, it. you have a bir you have a Christmas present for uh, Jake here. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, hey, Zeus. That's a layup. All right, Chris, what about you? What's been your favorite comic of the year? Well, uh, in typical Chris fashion, I don't do anything half-heartedly. Uh, I live by a saying that is, uh, if you're doing anything half-heartedly, you're not trying hard enough. And I chose three. Sorry, guys. Uh, one oh, of them same. being do a powerbomb. Uh, so thank you both for, for kind of championing that. Of course, you can't have a, okay, I was going to say, Lance is showing me all of his. It's like, of course, we're, all, we're not just going to have one because I think, again, great minds think alike. So we're probably, a lot of us going to pick similar stories. Uh, so I, I have Do a Powerbomb, of course, Incredible, um, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and Human Target. So I guess I technically chose four, but uh, I put those together because they're both written by Tom King. Uh, and then uh, Woman of Tomorrow, of course, being illustrated by uh, Bequels Evely. And then you've got mm. Human Target, uh, just maybe one of the most beautiful books of the entire year by Greg Smallwood. If this doesn't get an Eisner, if he doesn't get an Eisner for Best Cover Artist 
or something, it'll be a travesty, uh, you know, equal to the worst atrocities in human history. And that's no hyperbole. <laughs> so, uh, and, and actually it looks like, uh, Supergirl woman of tomorrow was actually nominated for best limited series in 2022. Just want to quickly highlight that because again, we're talking about the Eisners and it being there we go. Uh, revered, but my actual pick, <laughs> you know, all that being said, my actual pick was the mini deaths of Lila star by boom studios. Of course, nice. I don't know how you, you can't at least mention this. Uh, I, you know, if you want to choose something else again, whether it be any other comic that came out last year, that makes sense. But the mini deaths of Light of star just came out of nowhere, you know, with Rom V writing it, Felipe Andrade, uh, you know, doing the illustrations mm-hmm. and you've got, uh, I'm, I hope I'm saying this correctly, but Anise Amaro, uh, for colors. And then you've got Am world design on letters. Let's just go over the accolades for a quick second before we talk about the story. Rom V was up for best writer. Andrade was up for best penciler. Amaro was up for best colorist and the series itself was up for best limited series. And unfortunately none of those, none of those guys won, but the fact that they had four nominations mm-hmm. for this book should probably tell you everything you need to know in terms of the many deaths of Lila star. I probably don't need to tell you a description, but just know that the figment of death is basically punished by coming back to earth and trying to find the person who, or well, they say person, but it's a baby <laughs> who yeah. creates the cure for death. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Okay. You can pick up the story yourself after that, but it's well worth it. If nothing else for the amazing story, but definitely for the art by Felipe Andrade has completely skyrocketed him to the top as one of the best working uh, artists in the industry. Uh, definitely check out the many deaths of Lila star. If you haven't already. Damn, I, I knew I shouldn't have gone um, after Chris. Something told me to uh, rearrange it or something. I think he was going to come correct. The many deaths of, of Lila Star, uh, I picked up the first two issues, and I was like, one, it was my introduction to uh, Rom V. And I was like, yo, who is this dude? And I need to keep an eye out for him. And I have been. I've been reading his Detective Comics uh, run right now. His Swamp Thing run was, was awesome. Um, and I almost put the many deaths of Lila Star on my list. But the only reason I didn't is because I didn't finish it. But now I have all the reason in the world to finish it because I know um, volume one is all is all done. But I was mad impressed by how good that was. And I'm and I am also making a, a little side list here because I'm curious about because Chris, you, you made a good point. I mean, a very obvious point, right, that there's going to be a lot of, I think, crossover um, among our lists. So I'm curious to see where some of these intersections are. And I feel like even though I said we weren't going to make a definitive list. I am curious <laughs> which ones, you know, I can recommend at the end to say, hey, you know, this, this was on all of our list. So right now I've got Human Target and do a power bomb, which kind of brings me to my, and I've, Chris, much like you, I never just do one. I always go w- <laughs> way too above and beyond. So my favorite comic of this entire year has been the Human Target. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> now, this is one of those, uh, uh, this is one of those technicality qualifiers, right? The first three issues came out in 2021, but a majority of the uh, series has come out this year. Uh, we are currently on issue nine of a 12 part series, so it'll wrap up next year. But uh, Tom King and Greg Smallwood, this feels like this has given me a lot of reason to always be at the shop. When, if I, I don't, I'm not there every Wednesday, but if I know uh, Human Target is coming out th- this week, I'm there. I'm there to pick up the, the new Human Target. Never has a comic book been this cool and sexy. It is like those are the two words I think of when, I, when I'm reading Human Target. And I wasn't collecting and reading um, Moon Knight when Greg Smallwood was doing the interiors with, um, I'm drawing a, a Jeff brain Lemire. for who, Jeff Lemire, thank you so much. But I remember that one being an event. People were talking about it, and I just didn't hop on the train for whatever reason. I get it now. Like, I Greg Smallwood is on another, he's, he's on another, like, planet when it comes to drawing comic books. Like, good lord. How can someone Agreed. be this good? Right? Yeah. And, and he's, yeah, it's, it's incredible. So Human Target, best comic uh, I've read all year. And then um, uh, coming in at number two is a four-part series called Rogues Gallery uh, from Image Comics. It is written by Hannah Rose May, who is an uh, Irish uh, uh, writer, and she's also an actress. She's played in, like, Altered uh, Carbon and uh, Sharpshooter, I believe is the name. But this is her, like, comic book writing debut. It's art with Justin Mason and then covers by Declan Shelby. Four issues. Super easy to consume. It all came out this year, and it uh, revolves around a um, an actress that plays a superhero uh, on TV, and um, it's uh, it follows her and then uh, a group of hyper fans, like fanboys and fangirls, who just 
loathe her to death, right? They're saying nasty things on Twitter about her. They just cannot stand her. And it's really about, like, the intersection of, like, being a, a fandom, toxic fandom, and, like, being someone that, like, dabbles in this world. And, you know, they things get really fucking crazy really quick. So it's a very kind of, uh, it's, it's a really cool commentary on, like, the darker side of, of fandom, right, and, and nerdom. And I'm sure, like, we can all discuss that. We've kind of, like, whether maybe engage in it early on or maybe just know people who are kind of toxic, right? We've all probably know of certain fandoms where we're like, ah, I don't really mess with those guys. So great story in that. And then last but not least, what was on my list? Oh, I think this is another kind of um, <clears throat> another little cheat code here, but uh, Catwoman Lonely City by, I mean, Cliff Chang does everything, writing, art, lettering, colors. Uh, it is, it is, I think, issue one, and two maybe came out last year or just issue one, but it was only a four part uh, series that ended this year. And it just reminded me, I think Catwoman is one of my favorite superheroes out there. Um, yeah, it's, it's like Dark Knight Returns, but for Catwoman and a much more like less gritty and less like grim dark version. So highly recommend those. So those were my picks. Uh, does anyone have any honorable mentions that they want to uh, uh, bring up before we move on to the next uh, segment? Uh, I'm yeah, go ahead, Lance. I'll, I'll bring up Ghost Cage uh, by Nick Dragata and so um, Caleb Goldner, I think okay. is, is how you say his last name. Uh, this series was like a love letter to manga. The, the art oh, is cool. so incredibly well done. You have uh, the premise is basically this company that is like this power plant has all these different levels where there is a different entity that is representing a certain particular thing that cr generates power. So there's a level of coal, wind, water, and it's basically like a nuclear reactor that's just about to blow up. And so there's a main character that is kind of paired up with a another, I don't even know how to describe the other character, another entity that is supposed to become the new source of power. And he's supposed to consume every other source of power and it's a wild story really interesting very quick only three issues uh -huh. um uh, but when i talked with uh nick at san diego comic-con i mentioned how much how great the series was would love to see more and he may have hinted that it might not be over so we'll see if we get more down the line but definitely ghost cage check it out it's fantastic yeah it's Good a great stuff. pick yeah, that Did one was a... very high on my list as well, Lance, and you and I have talked heavily about that. Uh, <clears throat> the amount of information and story that is jammed into three issues, like, it, it, it could be that movie alone, or excuse me, that those three issues could be a movie all by itself, or you could turn it into a full series. It, there is so much there, and yet it, it reads effortlessly. Hmm. I, would, I would highly recommend that. I am going to give an honorable mention to, excuse me, I'm going to give an honorable mention to A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance. Nice. That was also one of my absolute favorites. Um, Andre Lima Araujo did the art. He is a, a friend of our show. I, I, we message with him as often as we can, and we, we continue to tell him how much we love that series. But really, honestly, it most of it came out this year. But the ending of that was just chef's kiss. It was so good. It was so good. Uh, and Rick uh, Remender is the, the writer, which is why the writing is Yeah, that's so why smart. it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, that writing is real good. <laughs> I, I, I do want to say, um, just because Jake mentioned this earlier, but I've, I've found books specifically from the three of you before, and Ghost Cage was one of those that <laughs> – that Jake messaged me. He's like, hey, have you read this? And I was like, no, I don't even know what that is. He's like, go to your shop right now and get it. And I did. I did the same day and I picked it up and loved it. And <laughs> But I, I feel like I've had that experience with all three of you where either I'm listening to your show or I've just gotten a message from you yeah. <laughs> saying you need to read this. So it, it's cool. very fun to be with this, within this community and find things that you might not otherwise have found. Well said. Yeah, I, I agree there. I got an honorable mention. I can't believe I was almost going to let this one go without bringing it up, but Nice House on the Lake by James uh, Tinian and uh, Alvaro Martinez Bueno is one of the uh, – actually, it should have made my top three, to be honest. That comic is so fucking good. Like, <laughs> I've never read so many issues where nothing happens action-wise or, like, you know, um, things going on. But it is such a good just character study. 
and the the way that James Keenan is is juggling, I think it's damn near twelve different characters in a tiny house, right, in like a little a lake house, and just being so psychological with it. And those covers too are some of the I literally thought for at first those covers were like photos of people and stuff. Um, yeah, it's 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 not a superhero book. It's it's not high octane action, but it is such a good slow burn. Uh, a thriller, a, a little bit of horror. Well, I mean, a lot of horror elements when you consider the fucking aliens in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys get it. There, you man. Yeah. This is what I love about this episode already. I could I don't got to explain shit. You guys know yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice house on the. And here's the best part. Nice house. By the time this episode comes out, the last issue of Nice House on the Lake comes out. So twelve issues will be collected by the time. Um, well, it should be collected uh, shortly. But if you're a fan of psycho thrillers. And just you know, fucking weird ass aliens. Uh, this I yeah, it, that that has been fantastic. Is is there a more Vertigo book out right now that's not Vertigo <laughs> than right. Right else on the lake? Like, oh, come on, DC, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> uh, I've got I I will circle back to that comment in your Vertigo <laughs> comparisons uh, shortly. But I'm I'm so glad you said that. All right, let's move on to our our next list here, which is uh, we're gonna take a, a pivot from uh, uh, books and comics. And talk about our favorite non-superhero comic, uh, non-superhero slash comic movies released this year. Because that'll be a, a whole separate cat, um, category. But what's been your favorite non-superhero uh, non-superhero comic movie released this year? And I'm going to let uh, Jake kick us off first. Thanks for letting me go first because I feel like I'm going to steal this from the rest of Don't you. Don't you do it. Maybe. Steal it. Don't steal it. do it. I'm going with everything, everywhere. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I'm glad we'll you have something that. else, but it really is just the best. I, I, I remember seeing it. I wasn't even in this in Nebraska. I was at, at a, a friend's wedding, and there was extra time, and I was like, I guess I'll go see. I actually saw three movies in one weekend because <laughs> I got there early. There was just so much free time. I was like, I'm going to go see more movies because – there was just a lot to see. You're like, and I promise I, I came to celebrate your love. I promise. Not yeah. Just for well, <laughs> no, I only I mean, need six the, hours for that. The, <laughs> yeah. the groom was technically there with me yeah. for two of the three. So that, I mean, it okay, mostly counted. It. Anyway, everything everywhere all at once is, it's hard to describe because it is just, it, it the, it's almost one of the movies where like I come, I get out of it. I'm like, you had to be there. It Dude, literally yes. has that feeling. Well said. Yep. Well, I tried to um, I tried to explain the premise to my girlfriend, and I just I think I stopped halfway through. Like, look, I'll just buy another ticket. Like, if you want to go tomorrow, <laughs> we'll go tomorrow. And I'm not gonna sit here try to explain what the hell I just experienced. <laughs> yeah. When you so can I'll go a, with that. Go yeah, ahead. When you can have a film where two characters are rocks in oh, silence and have it be oh. potentially the best scene in your film, yeah, <laughs> the, the movie's amazing. Lance, I just I tear up anytime I'm going for a walk. And I see two rocks by each other. Like, think of the conversation they're yeah. having. You're like, especially so when beautiful. they have googly eyes on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I had to go with that. I have some honorable mentions, but maybe I'll wait because I don't want to take away anybody's okay. thunder in case those are your favorites. Fair enough. Chris, how about you take it from there? Oh, man. I thought – so Jake and I were very like-minded, so I thought he was going to choose this. I'm glad he didn't. And I'm just going to steal it from everybody else because I'm sure one of you guys have it also. Top Gun Maverick. Come on. It's the, the I knew best. It. I knew, uh, I I knew it's you literally yeah. one it of the best it's... cinematic experience I've had in my entire life. And that, and again, I, it, I'm sure everyone listening right now, if you've never listened to The Oblivion Bar, I'm pretty hyperbole most of the time. Like I like to go uh, – if, if, if I like something kind of, I'm like, it's the best ever. But no, really, <laughs> Top Gun Maverick is one of the best movie-going experiences I've ever had. I saw it four times in theaters. Uh, it is currently, I just want to do a little bit of stats on this. It currently is sitting at $1.48 billion at the box office, making it That's the highest B, right? grossing with a B, 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 B. all right. There and <laughs> um, it's currently the highest grossing film of 2022, probably going to be the highest grossing film of this year, uh, highest grossing of, of Tom Cruise's entire career. And it's the fifth <laughs> highest grossing of all time domestically. So people were, this thing had legs. And I, I bet you right now, if you check Fandango, you could go see Top Gun Maverick tonight if you wanted to. It's still in theaters, even though it came out during the summer. So everyone listening to this, everyone here in this, you know, in this conversation or otherwise, you've probably already seen Top Gun Maverick. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but 
after buying the 4K and watching it again, even at home, this is the first time I've watched it at home after seeing it already a dozen times in the theaters. It's still, there's something about just the action in that movie and the heart. It, you know, my greatest comparison, Lance, to kind of go back to what you were saying earlier about do a power bomb. Obviously, these properties are compl about completely different things, but the way I feel about both of them are almost exactly the same. It's this very just emotionally driven, like I want to say, I don't want to say silly concept because that's not correct. Almost like um, simple, I guess is probably the best way to put it. A simple concept where it's character driven and emotional. And it's up to you to kind of get in touch with who you're following in these two properties. Uh, Top Gun Maverick, uh, one of the greatest sequels of all time. Can't recommend it enough. And I do have some honorable mentions as well, but I'll wait like Jake and, and we'll go through all everyone else's before we do that. Great pick. Great pick. I feel like Top Gun Maverick should be a um, when when you're applying for your um, U.S. citizenship, like you have to watch that. <laughs> yes. If you're born on American soil, soil, like you got to watch that at age five. That's how you get like you know become an American. All yeah. right, Lance. What about you, man? Uh, I knew both of those movies were going to pop up on this list, and that's why I chose my number one to be Prey, the Predator prequel. Ooh, ooh, I God, that came out this I year. Freaking love that movie and the fact that i did not get to see it in theaters hurts me because Damn. it is one of the best filmed movies of the year visually beautiful action was so well done that and we have a character with with amber mid thunder this this uh, incredible actress that needs to be doing a lot more work in the industry honestly and I felt like her character as our, as our protagonist throughout the film gave me the same feel as our lead female protagonist in like uh, Sarah Connor or our Ripley. I, I had that same feeling throughout this entire movie and it, it's so profound and it's one of those movies that doesn't tell you what's happening, it shows you. And mm. I'm so happy that we get a movie that does not talk down to its audience. And it, it lets you put the pieces together and then just does it incredibly well and just builds the world of Predator even more. And I left that. Th I was no, I didn't leave the theater. I felt like I was in the theater, but I was on my couch. I immediately wanted to watch <laughs> the movie again. And I did. So uh, I can't recommend that one enough. But again, those other two picks are fantastic. Everything everywhere all at once is a, like a once in a like lifetime experience of a film. But yeah. wow, Prey just like blew me away. Yeah, Prey was one that I, I was late to the game, but I by the time it left theater, I think everyone was still talking about it. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's let's just give it a shot. And it did not disappoint. Uh, it made me want to um, it never go went back to and revisit. It was never oh, it never in, did. Yeah, it, never, was never it, it, it was a Hulu you, original. You That's know what, the way people were talking about it, it, the way, exactly, yeah, the way people were talking about it made me feel like I missed it in theater. I was like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? I missed an IMAX. Everyone it literally just like theater. premiered on Hulu one day. Yeah. I was like, what is this? And you know, again, yeah. when they were kind of promoting it, if you really were in the know, you're like, of course, this is a Predator prequel. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and this is, uh, to kind of speak on what you're saying here, Lance, this is like a total like jumpstart of a franchise that has been lacking mm. you know, over the last decade. And I think... We're going to see some good things from the Predator franchise if they, you know, have everyone who was involved with Prey continue on. Awesome. Well said. I completely agree with all of that. And I, I want to say, Lance, you sort of touched on it. But what this, what Prey does for the Predator as a franchise, the backstory, the the foundation that it built was really what the what predator was missing the whole time to be honest it's kind of like what alien is missing they tried to do some stuff with prometheus that i i'm personally going to say they missed on but mm. really predator just set up a foundation that they can take anywhere well said uh so top gun maverick and everything everywhere all at once were on my list at number two and number three respectively i was um I guess I, I get lucky, and I'm, I'm pretty. I, I like the diversity of our picks so far. My number one favorite movie that I've seen this year, non superhero, non comic book related, was Nope. Jordan Peele's nice. uh, latest flick, Kiki Palmer, Daniel Kaluuya, Stephen Yoon. Um, I was. I, I've been look every movie Jordan Peele's put out since uh, Get Out. Fantastic. Uh, what, what was the second one? See, the second one. Uh, us. Us. Uh, I'm kind of like hit or miss on that. So I was really curious how this third one was going to hit. 
and Nope just blew my expectation out the water. Much like Everything Everywhere All at Once, it was a movie I had no idea what it was going to be about. I had seen the trailers, and I still didn't quite get like what the deal was. But by the time I left that movie, it was um, it was surprisingly very victorious. It gave me like a very victorious uh, feeling when when you get to the end and the concept that you know, it, like Jordan Peele, you, you give him a, a concept that you feel like might be played out, and he just finds a way to the, like just this a nuance to it that hasn't been explored, and he you know puts his spin on it, and it feels fresh. And that's how I feel about Nope and the concept of fucking UFOs. Okay, I left that theater. Just very weary of any stray clouds, all right? I was, I did not <laughs> trust any clouds that were just hanging out by themselves. And, and if you watch the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But nope, I, it, hit all the, it, hit all, it hit all the emotions for me from, like, what the fuck is going on to, oh, man, I really hope they get out of this to, yeah, like, just cheering in my seat. Um, still a movie I feel like I haven't seen done quite um, anything like that. Um, but, yeah, uh, Top Gun Maverick was on my list for the same reason, Chris, you said. I feel like that was a quintessential. When people talk about, like, movie-going experiences, I, I left that just, like, like just prideful. Like, you know, chest, like, poked out and all that. Um, I, I guess I'll get us kicked off with the honorable mentions. I've only got one here. Um, and I can share my TV list. I don't know. Did you guys do a, a list for TV at all? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I guess didn't. Yes and no. No. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and just uh, I'll give my honorable mention for movies, uh, which is The Gray Man, which was a, a Netflix movie that premiered this so year. Fun. Had uh, Ryan got yeah. Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans. Yeah, same. It wasn't like mind blowing. I got great. shot in the ass, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's kind of your run of the mill uh, spy thriller. A spy's uh, agency turns against him, and he's a, you know a one somehow a, a, a one spy can take down a whole agency of you know the world's top most spies whatever but ryan goslin and chris evans chemistry and just chris evans really just his whole kind of like you know i don't want to play a good guy at this movie i think i'm gonna play a, a total douche i man. love when chris With... evans is the dick it's the best yeah. It's yeah, the, yeah. it is the most fun yeah. like knives out scott pilgrim versus the yeah. world knives out and this is like all my favorite roles from him outside of captain yeah. america yeah gray man such a fun movie i was glad to see like netflix put out something that i was like oh i'm actually enjoying watching this you know okay you guys can take 14 dollars uh this month for me well justified <laughs> uh and and just really quick i'm gonna mention my my tv uh series real quick uh barry season i think three came out this this year uh stupendous uh, i've got andor on my list because it was kind of a sleeper for me i wasn't expecting to care or like andor but by the end i was kind of upset uh, it wasn't longer, even though it was a 12 fucking episode series. Uh, and then Atlanta season four, the Donald Glover show finally came to an end and was fucking spectacular. Uh, Chris, what are your honorable mentions? So I had everything ever, everything everywhere all at once as one of my honorable mentions, of course. Like, I don't need to say it again. Incredible. One of the best A24 films of all time. And kind of speaking on to A24, if anyone knows me or knows the Oblivion Bar, they all will tell you that I'm an A24 simp. I don't care i will i will, <laughs> no. I will champion that studio good or reason. whatever they're chris, called chris good loves reason. leaving the theater confused yes <laughs> i like to think about sadness and confusion all right i love it love some existentialism um, right <laughs> but to go along with that and i agree with you guys 100 percent uh and just to kind of i want to do it like a shameless uh, brag during covid before we started the oblivion bar i actually m my main goal was to go through and watch every single a24 film leading up to i think saint maude was the newest one at that time and mm -hmm. i did it and uh i was very i think that's where i have my existential like depression bubbles every once in a while now is from that watch through like i was fine how before many, that and for some reason now i need to like sleep for 12 hours every other day i don't know what's going how many, on <laughs> how many movies was that in total it was 103 god damn so so what i'm hearing is is chris has existential dread from his a24 run botter you can't look up in the sky and see a cumulonimbus cloud anymore without being terrified so what, what's your trauma jake <laughs> Don't say you I don't, don't got none. Lies. Being alone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this question. I didn't research it. <laughs> it wasn't in the outline, Lance. This is your time to be vulnerable. <laughs> Jake, no, what, what, uh, go ahead, Sorry, go ahead. I, I had one more here. I, so to talk about A24, uh, to kind of speak on the dread of it all, this is the opposite of that. The movie, the, my other audible mention that came out in 2022 was actually Red Rocket, which was directed by Sean Baker, who you may know from Tangerine and The Florida Project, also from A24. Uh, it stars Simon Rex and Susanna's son. 
And uh, here's a kind of description in case you missed it somehow. But uh, Mikey Saber, a charismatic con man and washed up porn star, plots his return to the big time from a small town Texas uh, city in a story of an American hustler and a hometown that barely tolerates him. And that's kind of a vague overview. I think what's really important about this, and if you've seen the Florida Project, it's very similar, is you're just kind of with Simon Rex's character. And this guy, you hate him almost immediately. From the moment he's on screen, you never root for him. But it's just interesting seeing him interact with these people in his life. Uh, I think it possibly is on Amazon Prime right now if you're interested. A24, they'll just like slip a movie in there every once in a while. Like, We'll hear about the everywhere all at once is we'll hear about the mm-hmm. uncut gems of the world. But then there's always those like under the radar ones, which I actually talk about another one here in just a bit that comes out, uh, I think in a couple of weeks uh, or maybe next week. Uh, but Red Rocket, definitely, if you've not seen or haven't heard of it, definitely seek it out. It is really good. You're going to hate this guy, but you're going to have a good time watching him live his life. Good disclaimer. I like it. Jake, what about you? Got any honorable mentions for uh, TV or movies? Yeah, I do. And I'll, I'll do one for both. Uh, so the, the other honorable mention, I'm going to name it because I don't think it's going to get named on enough lists, even though when it first came out, it really kind of shocked everybody. And that is the unbearable weight of massive talent, uh, with the Nicolas Cage film where he's playing Nicolas Cage, the, the most meta Nicolas Cage thing (laughs) he could ever do. (laughs) The easiest paycheck he's ever gotten. The thing was, is I actually, this was one of the, this was another movie I saw, uh, at the wedding or that wedding weekend. <laughs> that infamous and... weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I missed well, the ceremony. I... Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it was. It, oh, it no, Jake, you're Jake. frozen. But in this case, I walked into He's it like I've got movie. nothing else to do <laughs> for the next, you know, so many hours. I guess I'll go see another movie. And I already saw, like, it was funny because it was also the last choice. On my list, I was like, well, I've already seen it was the weekend of uh, Doctor Strange. So I'd already seen everything everywhere all at once. I had already seen Doctor Strange uh, and and the Northmen. And I was like, well, the only one here that I haven't seen that has any remote interest to me is this. So I went and saw it. I laughed my ass off in that theater. I cannot remember the last time I had that much fun laughing in a movie theater because Generally speaking, I don't usually gravitate towards comedies. I know I like to read a lot of horror stuff. All, anybody who's listened to Spec Tales, I listen. I watch a lot of horror movies, so usually things are dark, and yet somehow the movies I picked this year are not dark ones at all. So I had so much fun laughing for no damn reason. Like it was just the most ridiculous shit, and that's what that that movie is. Just lower your expectations, and it will blow you away. Good stuff. <laughs> Jake, you mentioned uh, you had one for for TV. Did you want to share that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to at least mention just how freaking good uh, Stranger Things was. Stranger Hmm. Things season four came out this year. I got had me so emotionally affected uh, that it literally it it made me buy art. (laughs) I don't know how to. I literally. (laughs) (laughs) I collect art now. I don't know why. I, I I bought art because of that. <laughs> Jake's like I bought a Picasso. I don't know what I'm going to do with this shit. I love Stranger Things for it. And now I have a Monet. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh damn, that's that is a sign of uh, really loving something. I I bought art. All right, what do you want me to do? That's great. Awesome. Will you tell us what the art is? I want to know now. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well. Okay. Well, it's you guys are going to laugh because I call it art. I'm going to show you. Sorry. It's. It is. Oh, okay. oh Eddie right. Munson. Uh, so uh, that's backwards because, it, but it's a master of puppets piece of artwork by the artist uh, Staz Johnson. Okay. Uh, he's a comic book artist, but I still this is to me this is absolute art that I I'd never purchased anything before, uh, nice. and it is a replica of a it's a piece of art, but it's a replica of a comic book that he created. Uh, called The Master of Puppets, and it's got Eddie Munson, the character from this most recent season. And I literally was so impacted by the the show because I don't I don't hang art on my walls very much. It's not something that I just go out and do. Uh, I'm not that le- I'm not that kind of collector. I see you, Chris. I see you over there. Me and, either. And I immediately like saw this, and I said, if I don't buy this, I will explode. And that's that's what the show did to me. <laughs> Thank God he didn't explode. Good choice. 
Uh, and, and I guess uh, an hour into the show, I probably should have uh, told the listeners that uh, there is a video version of this uh, podcast that you can watch on YouTube. It'll be linked in the show notes if you're curious, uh, which you should see the uh, piece of artwork that Jake uh, just showed off. Uh, Lance, do you got any honorable mentions for TV or movies before we move on? I do. Really quick, I'll, I'll mention uh, House of the Dragon for TV. Uh, Hell yeah. Considering the fact that I could have cared less about a another Game of Thrones show after the debacle that was the finale of okay. uh, Game of Thrones, uh, the show blew me away. I was so impressed. Matt Smith, coming off of, of Morbin time, uh, absolutely crushed it in his role in the show. But the entire cast Damon was so well. Like, yeah, they crushed Ooh, it. I loved it. Man. I can't wait for the rest of the series. Uh, as far as films, I have, I have, I love going to see movies. I have AMC A list, so I see as many movies as I possibly can get to. And this this year was like dominated by horror for me. Like between Smile, Barbarian, X, and then I just mm. I just saw the menu earlier today oh. too. Uh, th all of these films just incredibly well done, uh, and then Bullet Train is just one of the funnest movies of the year. It's a blast. I'm glad you said that. That was a movie I missed in theaters, but I see it's on uh, Netflix, I believe. Bullet Train. I'm gonna yeah. watch that uh, before the year's over. It is Good the third stuff. act is ridiculous, but amazing. Good stuff. And Lance, I'm glad you brought up House of Dragons because that, that was actually tied with Andor for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think House of Dragons. I I really enjoyed. Just, just for the, um, I don't know, I don't know what you'd call it, but just for the act of watching it and like the, I get, the, you know, the zeitgeist, the zeitgeistiness of it, the fact that like everyone kind of fell back into form when it kind of came to Game of Thrones, where it's like, look, this is scheduled viewing, right? If you ain't watching it on Sunday at you know nine o'clock, you best not show up to work. Cooler. You know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. That was. Watched it on Sunday. Monday, I actually had things to talk to uh, talk about with my coworkers outside of the weather and you know the crappy projects we're working on. So, Spoilers: yeah, We're going to talk about House of Dragon here in just a minute. <laughs> All right, bet. So uh, let's <laughs> move on to our next category here, uh, which is uh, you know we're going we we wouldn't be a, a comic book podcast if if I didn't separate this one into its own. And I want to hear uh, everyone. What is everyone's favorite? I'm sorry. What was everyone's favorite superhero slash comic book movie, or even if you want to combine television in it, that's fine too. But favorite superhero comic um, and or sorry, favorite superhero slash comic book movie television released this year. I'm gonna let uh, uh, Lance. How about you kick us off? Sure. Uh, this one it was between two for me, and it just from performances from an ensemble cast. I'm just gonna go with uh, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Uh, nice. Angela Bassett like blew my mind in this film. There were this movie had to do so much. It had to honor Chadwick Boseman. It had mm -hmm. to continue the storyline, and everyone just came together and crushed it. There is not a weak performance in the entire film. It it is everyone brought it because they knew they had to, or else it it would be a dishonor to what Chadwick brought every single time he stepped in front of the camera. Um, and oh my gosh, like introducing Riri and Namor and the beautiful world that we got with Tylo Khan uh, and the song they play when you get to see Tylo Khan for the first time. I play that in the car almost daily now because it's so beautiful. Uh, but yeah, that's my pick. That's a good one. Very strong uh, argument right there. Jake, what about you? Uh, maybe cliche. I'm going with the Batman. Uh, there we it go. was it, it, early on in the year, and the funny thing was, is I think it was of this year, wasn't it the first superhero film of the yep. year? Yep. I think it came was, out in January or March. February? March. 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 I know it was maybe. Q1. Yeah. And the thing mm -hmm. was, is I, I, I really enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. Uh, I liked what they did with the the Riddler. I thought it was a really good take, fun take by Paul Dano, and I had. So high, I, like I didn't hate what the MCU did all year. I know some people are on that train where they literally hated every, you know, it seemed like everything. Uh, I was not in that category. I found things to enjoy in every movie that they did uh, this year, but I just the Batman was the one that that blew me the way the most. And uh, I, I, I guess I'd have an honorable mention for television if I could separate the two and just say, "Holy shit, Peacemaker." 
Ooh. God, that oh, was so yes. much fun. Oh, I still play that mm. song. Do you really? Once do you a week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't need to play it. It's just permanently stuck in my head. Yeah. If I hear exactly. if I hear any of the words from the lyrics, do you really? Do you really want in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> I just sing it. Good stuff. That's a good list, Jake. Chris, uh, what about you? Peacemaker. Uh, <laughs> Um, again, great minds think alike. Mine is the Batman. Uh, and I think it was pretty easy for me. Extremely easy, actually, because to kind of touch on what Jake was saying here, in terms of the MCU, they generally have that top spot for whatever the best movie they put out that year. Uh, you said everything that I was going to say, Jake, outside of, uh, you know, the Batman, it grossed over $770 million at the box office, uh, which has basically warranted a second installment already with this weird shakeup that DC Studios is doing right now with uh, you know James Gunn and Peter Saffron they've said you know what everything else you're done we got the Batman we've got Harley Quinn and we've got Peacemaker let's go forward with that and see what happens but uh, you were kind of speaking on how a lot of people aren't enjoying this you know next phase of the MCU and I and I I don't want to seem like a pessimist and I don't want to seem like I hate everything because I agree with you there are things about each movie that I liked but I I don't know if it's oversaturation I don't know if it's um, maybe a, just a disconnect or a quality dip. I don't know. But Phase 4 has been, outside of She-Hulk, Loki, and um, WandaVision, the shows are good. The movies, though, I will say Thor, Thor Love and Thunder, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and I would even say Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I left slightly disappointed. It did None of them blew me away. And I hate saying that because I love the MCU. I'm literally... You guys can see it right here in the background. I have a Black Panther poster right next to me. I'm a big fan. You have a um, Silver Surfer tattoo. No one can debate your love of the Marvel. You yeah, know. Chris, exactly. try and say why you're a comic book fan a little bit more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you guys can see the, the, this behind me, you could probably, I, I don't need to say much. Um, not to mention I have a podcast about it. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where, I, and I don't want to make this entry all about how bad the MCU didn't hit with me. But because the Batman, we all know it's good, right? Like, the, we really don't need to say much. Mm -hmm. When we first see the Batmobile in the Batman, I, I don't think my hairs have stood up that strong since Captain America picked, picked up Mjolnir. You know, it's just, it was one of those moments that just, it gave me exactly the feeling that I wanted from a superhero movie, yeah. even though this version of Batman isn't really <laughs> a superhero, you know? Like, he's just a really demented detective going against the guy who was wearing a mask. Like, it, it just, it hit all the right notes for me. I think the Batman, I was actually surprised that, you know, that wasn't all of our pick, but I understand why, you know, Lance, why you love Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and why we'll talk about other ones, but I feel like the Batman, for me, was just far and away the best entry of 2022. Can I be honest? Mm-hmm. I knew all of you were going to pick the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> we needed some variety. Tried to zig when we were going to zag. I, I'll be honest, I, I'm i actually surprised that the Batman has topped uh, two lists so far, because I, I think... Um, uh, Jake, you brought it up that it it came out so early. I think when it all right, sorry, let me take a step back. When it comes to these lists, sometimes I I, I know recent recency bias plays a big part, right? Like it's like, well, I can only remember so much, and you know, we get so much content every you know every month alone, you know, much less the year. And you know, this is the year that we saw the release of superhero movies like Black Adam, the Batman, you know, Batman being early on, but we also got Doctor Strange of the Multiverse, Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, recently, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. But then, you know, Morbius. just talking about the TVs. <laughs> yeah, why are you not <laughs> that, including you Morbius, about Morbius in this bother? Morbius, yes, yes, Morbius, yes. Uh, yes, because he needs to We all morb. Don't, don't lie. <laughs> the Morbin time was real, Botter. But we also got comic book TV shows like Paper Girls came out this year, Peacemaker, Sandman, Moon Knight, She-Hulk, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. So it was a lot... Um, it, it was a lot of superhero and, and comic book content this year. So I was really surprised to see Batman, something that came out so early in the year, uh, top the list. But uh, it, it was, it's an honorable mention for mine. So spoiler, uh, you know, spoiler alert, uh, the Batman is on my list as an honorable mention for a lot of the reasons that, um, that Chris brought up. Uh, but specifically because it just got me excited about Batman again. Like leading up to that, we did like a, a Batman spotlight episode. I think we... Did a spotlight on, uh, I think, the long Halloween, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. But it just got me rereading uh, Batman comics again. I like reread Hush, I, you know, Dark Victory, and uh, Year One. It just made me excited to be a Batman fan again and, and see the character done justice. And um, and I think also like the lack of all of the silly politics and Ben Affleck um, stuff going on, like the disattachment from all that and having a clean slate uh, was was refreshing. But the three 
superhero and comic book properties that made my list at the very top is Peacemaker. That was a show I was not expecting to like that much. I, I literally dragged my girlfriend into watching it, and she was like, what is this? John Cena? You mean the guy from the Suicide Squad movie? He's got his own series? I had a similar reactions, but she was definitely, you know, she's not into this world like that. So she was a little bit like, eh. But by the end of it, we were both like, oh, my God. I hope Peacemaker makes it out. Man, can you believe what a shitty father he's got? You know, like, just feeling so empathetic for the character. And, I mean, I, I applaud John Cena for his uh, performance. Um, he, he nailed it. I feel like Peacemaker was made for John Cena. It was such a surprisingly amazing, amazing show. And then uh, at number two, I've got Werewolf by Night. And, Chris, I've, I've kind of felt pretty similar about the Phase 4. I think, for me, it's mainly just the stakes nearly aren't high enough yet i think there's still a lot of like foundation that they're doing and um you know it just i do appreciate that phase four as as offered different takes and different styles uh to the mcu but werewolf by night i think is was a little bit of all that stylistically very unique awesome to look at like a very good uh, uh standout addition to the mcu i like the the fact that they lean into the horror elements and like Really went all the way with it. it with a minor character, you know. I mean, Werewolf by Night, yeah, to us comic heads, he's, he's not a Z-list character. But to the general public, it's like a werewolf. Or like every other werewolf fucking movie, right? But they, they did it fantastic and introduced fucking Man-Thing. I mean, come on, man. Man-Thing. Um, so good. Exactly. And I've got Moon Knight on here as well. Uh, Oscar Isaac really could do almost no wrong a a in my book. Um, and this Moon Knight series, though I, I did have... Some issues with, with the ending and the way they wrapped things up. For the most part, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it was uh, another series that got me very interested into Moon Knight, the character. I wasn't, you know, it's the reason why I've read the Jeff Lemire, Greg Smallwood run. It's the reason I started, like, doing more research about Moon Knight and appreciating him as as more than, uh, you know, a Batman knockoff. Was, which I kind of generally thought of him prior to this. But uh, I thought they did a good job on the Moon Knight series. Does anyone have any honorable mentions for the superhero comic book category? Well, I just want to make two quick points really quick. Kind of speaking on Moon Knight, I, I really wish they would have done what they did with Werewolf by Night with Moon Knight. Really mm. lean into that 1970s kind of yeah. first, you know, Jake, you'll you'll appreciate this, kind of the EC horror where he premiered in Werewolf yep. by Night, like that era. Yeah. Like just lean into the weirdness because he's a weird character. And I felt like every time they were this close to leaning into it, they just reverted back to the superhero shit. And I was so like bummed out by that. Because I agree with you 100%. Outside of those like falling into the trappings, if it was just gone, if it had just gone just a tad more weird, it, I really think it would have pushed it over the edge for me. Um, and then the second comment I wanted to make really quickly is that does anyone else think that Jake looks a lot like Vigilante from Peacemaker, or is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I hadn't thought about it no. because who Dude. looks at people and thinks I look like that guy? But I've gotten that before. I've also got uh, uh, from the Flash TV show. I don't remember the recall the name oh, of the actor. Uh, uh, Grant Austin? Gustin. Grant Gustin. Thank you. I've gotten that actually before nah, too, I, which is not. That, I would rather again, be both. I, I don't know why I'm getting confused for these people. No, I'd rather shooting, be. You're shooting. I'd rather be vigilante. Woods. All right, I'd rather be vigilante. <laughs> That is good. Uh, look, listeners, uh, you, you might have to just check out the video version, right? Jake is out here stealing the show, and he ain't even trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jen, does anyone have uh, any honorable mentions uh, for this category? Superhero movies, comic book properties, I, any, any honorable mentions? I do. So I have something that I feel like is quasi-related. So this year we saw the closure of Phase 4. We're done with, you know, Black, uh, Black Panther 2 was the finish of Phase 4 for the MCU. So I think I can realistically say now that it is finished that the best film I feel like within Phase Four uh, was Shang Chi. Was uh, I think? Oh it my was god, the, that came out this year, film. right? No, no, no. Yeah, it came out was, la end oh, of last okay. year, but it it, it was um, in uh, Phase Four, and I think now that we've seen all the films that Phase Four has to offer, I truly think that that origin story was the best one we we were offered in Phase Four, best film in that Phase Four. So, so uh, now that we have the, the, the whole thing to look at, that's, I wanted to say that here. Yeah, right. I think it's, no, it's probably really close between Shang-Chi and No and Way Home for me. Yeah, Same. but I, I mean, I think it's, it really is. I mean, when you look at the surface, you look at the surface and you go <clears throat> Spider-Man or Shang-Chi, you're like, oh my gosh, of course it's Spider-Man. Not really. Honestly, I think Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings was, I would say, as good 
maybe I give a slight nod to Spider-Man, but I think it's so close, and I think that's a win in all of itself. Uh, Spider-Man I, I had give the a... spectacle. It had the spectacle. Yes. I'll give you that, sure. but it yeah, didn't have them. the action scenes. It did not have the same level of action sequences. Great. That was yeah. it for me. Like Introducing those level of action sequences to the MCU is what won me over. That's yeah. Fair. yeah. Yep. Like the bus scene, as soon as that starts to pop off, the music comes in. Ooh, it, it's yeah. real good. Shang-Chi versus uh, fighting his dad at the end. You know, I kind of wish they would have just cropped the fucking 3D uh, uh, CGI dragon out and just kept it just at that fight because it was so two. epic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah agreed. Good. Might have been the only I, real letdown, and I would agree with you with that. Only, they they should have just kept it between the two. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Still, I think the, the, the Marvel Universe, Marvel Studios is going to, I think, maybe with Werewolf by Night, maybe with one that I want to quickly talk about with She-Hulk, I think they're going to kind of lean into some of these weirder parts of the universe. And hopefully, you know, we all know who the, we all know who Moon Knight is. We all know who She-Hulk is. We, we understand that they have iconic runs in the comics, and that's what makes them so special. I think mm -hmm. that maybe in Shang-Chi 2... Maybe we just have a more martial arts story and there's less superhero -ness, you know, nisms yeah. to it. Um, and, and I want to talk about She-Hulk as well. I know people had issues with the CGI. I get it. I'm not really going to hold that against it, though, because these VFX artists are being worked to the bone. And it's like, that's not... The writing, though, I think the story and the way that they flipped the Marvel Studios you know, method on its head is worth commending. And I think that Tatiana Maslany is great as the character. I'm excited to see her in the MCU. I think that, you know, just the ending, I, you know, I think a lot of people, it's very divisive in terms of what you thought about the finale, but I was like, I, I was like, they're doing, they're doing it. They're really doing it. And I was, and I was excited about that. So, and I, and Lance's point, he agrees. I, I think that there yeah. are certain people, I understand if you don't like it, I totally get it because you're taking this thing, this stuff seriously. And I understand that you you like don't want to be poking fun at it, but mm. it's comics, baby. You gotta be you gotta have a little bit of fun sometimes. Yeah, I Chris, love She Hulk. I, Chris, I I agree with you 100 percent on Marvel should just lean all the way into this weirdness because you can't top the super heroics that we got in, in the previous phases, right? Like mm -hmm. we got peak super heroics, you know, and, and just the two the last two Avengers movies, you know, I'm not counting any of the other ones. Like you can't top. That level of like heroics, like go into the weird shit, right? Like that's the only other direction you got. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Uh, we, can we I make this? Can I do one more yeah, runner up for TV? The Boy Please. Season 3. Oh yeah. my oh. gosh. I like the addition of Jensen Ackles to The Boys was perfection. He fits so well in that universe of Soldier Boy. And watching him go up against Homelander and the fact that they made Homelander even scarier than the previous two seasons <laughs> is mind boggling to me, but I, I had to include the boys here because that show just keeps getting better. And the fact they did uh hero gasm, you know, like they had the opportunity <laughs> to do hero gasm. Come yeah. on, man. Uh, Applaud. All right. We make this next segment uh, uh, rather quick, but this one was kind of a freebie. Uh, it was a favorite thing from another form of pop culture that was released this year. It, it could have been a video game, a book, a, I don't know, a magazine, wh whatever it may be. I, I left it up to you guys to pick your category for this one. Uh, Jake, how about you uh, kick this one off? So I put this as a kind of a higher arching thing, and, and it happens every time Stranger Things comes out, but the resurgence of D&D, &D, I feel, for <laughs> maybe it was just me. Maybe, maybe it was just me, but I feel like D&D &D and pop culture really hit really well this last year. And for me specifically, I'm going to go with uh, the return of The Adventure Zone, uh, which is a podcast that I thoroughly enjoy that has a lot of D&D &D ties. It mostly is D&D, &D, although not truly. Anyway, big fan of that, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who likes good storytelling and D&D uh, &D theatrics. Good stuff. Lance, what about you? Uh, I read this question wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I chose an anime, uh, but no, that I guess that that's fine. Okay. Uh, Chainsaw Man. Uh, that, oh, yep. sh that show, the, the manga is that. crazy good. The show is so much fun. And it, it, the relationship that our main character has with this like tiny little demon thing at the beginning is so much more heartfelt than the manga even was and i loved it and everyone needs to watch it because it is bonkers it is the most bananas prem bananas premise for an anime manga almost ever so go check it out it's wild the dude turns into a chainsaw demon thing it's crazy 
Go watch it. I'm watching the latest one tonight. I'm I'm all caught up. I love it. I, you're, it's great. you're spot on. Yeah. Cesar hasn't um hasn't had the opportunity to record for the last uh three months, I think, because he, he had his daughter over the summer, so he's been busy being a good dad. Uh but he was able to record in person last week for our holiday special, and that was the first thing he championed was Chainsaw Man. And I think his his uh um his uh summary was basically this is the go- this is Ghost Rider for anime. Oh, I think it was 100%. the way that he described it. Yeah. That's cool. All right, Chris, what about you? What you got? So I, I think I kind of understood the question wrong, but I also chose, I actually chose a television series and we already talked about it, which is House of the Dragon. I loved it so much. Uh, I didn't, re- we didn't have like a section for TV series specifically, but I wanted to champion it because it got me back into Game of Thrones. You know, again, to kind of speak on yeah. that ending and where we were all at with the franchise at the end, it was so demoralizing because we had been on this journey for almost 10 years and it was just, remember back, to Game of Thrones season six, everyone. Let's just go back to the Battle of the Bastards for a second and <laughs> enjoy on, that, all of us, and just be like, how good is this show? And then we go into season seven, and these guys sign this deal with Star Wars, and they just they could not run out the door quick enough to get out of Game of Thrones, and it was so defeating as a fan, knowing that they were doing it, and the show had never looked better. And the, obviously, the Winter's book is not even close to being done, apparently. George R. R. Martin just refuses to write this book, and they just they just finish it, and we're all so upset. Fast track five six years down the road, House of the Dragon comes out. I have no idea what this property is. We talk about it on the show during our news and notes, and I'm like, well, I liked Game of Thrones. I'll give it a watch. You know, I don't really know what Fire and Blood is, but you know, I mm. I'll give it a look. Right? Incredible. From from episode one, when we meet King Viserys passing the mantle on to uh, I'm sorry, not uh, Viserys is, is obtaining the king uh, kingdomship. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, shoot, why am I forgetting his name now? He was the longest reigning uh, king in... Is it Rhaegar? Uh, Rhaegar? Aegon. No. no it's they all Aegon. have the it's same name, Rhaegar. Chris. Rhaegar. Damn, all Rhaegar these is... similar names. <laughs> Rhaegar is John's dad. It doesn't matter. I'll think of it here in just a moment. But anyway, this is based on the Fire and Blood book, which of course is set 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones. And of course tells the story of the beginning of the end of the Targaryen family after we meet up with Daenerys you know, in the Game of Thrones universe. So House of the Dragon averaged 9.5 million viewers per episode on Ooh. premiere night and nine, 29 million total viewers after the week after of its release of that, of that episode, uh, which is of course, I mean, far and away the highest in the history of HBO and HBO max. It just has been a sweeping hit. It was announced for season two already got a green light after episode one. Like it was three days after episode, the pilot came out. They were like, we're doing season two. And I'm so excited. I've read fire and blood since then. And there's so much like fire and blood is this 400 page book and the dance of the dragons, which is what house of dragon is going to be. And probably be six seasons of mm. is 60 pages guys. There's Ooh. so much Targaryenness to this story and what they're doing with this series is insane. I'm just so excited. I can't, I know we got to wait two years for season two, but it's worth it. In my opinion is, is the book worth getting into? Absolutely. It starts with cool. Aegon the Conqueror, the, the very first Targaryen that came over from Valyria, over to Westeros, conquered it, took over everything outside of the south, and it just cool. goes from there all the way up to where we're at currently with House of the Dragon. The reason why George R. R. Martin isn't wrapping up this other book is because he's count he's he's writing a page in between counting his millions and of royalty <laughs> checks. He's like, I'll, I'll get a to one, it. I'll get to it, right? A two, a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll they write paid one him more in chapter. singles. Yeah. yeah. No, those are millions. Those are millions. Those are mil- <laughs> okay. Single million dollar bills. Yes. Uh, they have his face on it. I. All right. I'm gonna say one thing that we won't unpack. We don't have to unpack it at all. I'm just gonna say the Rings of Power was better. That we can keep going now. Wow. I can't say like carpet bombed. You, like carpet bombed the, the fucking combo and then left. <laughs> can I? Damn. Can I Jake, is a bad, myself. Jake is a I'm mad gonna, lad. We're gonna unpack this. Let's unpack this for <laughs> no, a quick second. We don't have time. <laughs> I, I need just to say ripped this. out their earbuds. Yeah, that'll be the uh, yeah. That's it. Thanks, thanks for. I, I just lost all of our listeners. All two of them are gone now. <laughs> I just want to expose right. myself really quick because I don't. Hit it. If I could, if I could just take out my laminated nerd <clears throat> card and just show it to you guys and and hope that you don't tear it up or cut it in half, is I don't like Lord of the Rings. I've, I don't like the books. Oh. I don't like the shows. I don't like the movies. I've, I couldn't get into them. I apologize. I don't like The Hobbit. Uh, Lance just fell. Uh, Jake's giving me the finger, everyone, uh, and we can move on. And now we can now Chris, we can put it, pack it back up. Chris, 
we might be the same guy, for, you know. And I gotta talk to my mom if if uh, if she ever got a white guy, because now I'm I'm fully convinced. Same man. I it, it, prior to meeting my girlfriend, who is a Lord of the Rings diehard. I think I have watched. Um, I think I've I've watched all Lord of the Ring movies at least ten times, uh, unwillingly, <laughs> ever since I've, I've dated her. Um, it's just I don't know what it is. There's just a disconnect, and the new show I just could not get into. But I can get into some uh, Lord. Um, I can get into some uh, Game of Thrones and House of Dragons, though. Uh, for this category, though, I wanted to share. Uh, I, I've got two things for this one. One is the Milestone documentary that came out on HBO Max this year. Uh, which you know put a spotlight on uh, the uh, DC imprint of Milestone, the creators, the uh, origin of Static Shock, Hardware, and on all of the titles that came out of that. Hosted by Method Man, who I could not think of a better host for a documentary like that. Uh, very well done. Um, great insight. I learned a whole bunch about Milestone that I did not know. And the fact that they interviewed all of the original um, creators like Dennis Cohen, and they were speaking so highly. Uh, it was original Hudlin, I believe. Uh, Reginald Hudlin, right? Yeah, he's he did, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, actually yeah, yeah. he wrote the Black Panther, his iconic <clears throat> Black Panther run after right. he left Milestone. Yeah. yeah, it was like a, a, it was like a who's who of of like famous and well-known black comic book creators. Um so I definitely got to praise Milestone Doc and I want to see more comic book documentaries like that, both well done but also like diving into the history and and lesser known things like that. Um and then I'll, I'll also give a mention to and a nod to uh, Shredder's Revenge, the TMT video game that came out this year. Um, it was not a remake, but it damn sure felt like, you know, uh, a remake of Turtles in Time or any of the, the, the Konami ones. So fun. So fun. Straightforward story. You could easily pick it up. It, it scratched that itch of, I want to play a, a game right now, but I just don't have time to sit through a 20-minute cutscene or, like, be really devoted to a story. Um, excellently fun i've i literally have bought two copies of it uh this for christmas gifts uh to give to my nephews as well as friends i think anyone can just play it and have a good time so those are my uh picks for that one all right moving on uh we got a, just a few more categories here we can go a little quicker on this one uh what is the best comic movie and or other piece of pop culture slash media that wasn't released this year so it could have came out last year or even earlier than that that you either discovered for the first time or you, maybe you revisited it because you love it so much that that you want a, a, a shout out. I'm going to go to uh, Lance for this one. Uh, I got to give a big uh, time thank you to Chris for this recommendation because that's Murder Falcon for me. Uh, again, Ooh, Daniel Warren is... Johnson uh, just hitting Good my list shit. every single time I'm talking, I feel like. Good shit. Murder Falcon like blew me away. I had to constantly stop myself mid panel just to take in what was happening in that book and i found myself closing it and turning to my wife every five minutes and just saying this comic is just so <laughs> good uh, it it hits that emotional draw that i look for in media and it it's just such a beautiful story and even though uh i I, I don't even know. I, I need like three hours just to talk about this comic because it's so good. But it, it's just beautifully illustrated. Uh, I've I've never teared up reading a comic before, but I did multiple times reading this story. It's just beautiful. It's written with so much heart and visuals are next level. And yeah. uh, and like getting getting to meet uh, DWJ at San Diego Comic Con and then getting like a sketch of Murph in my hardcover of that will be eternally will be one of my favorite con experiences of all time. Well said Lance. I read uh, murder Falcon for the first time on a, on a plane. I think I was going somewhere for a vacation and as much as I loved it, it was not the right book to read prior to like a really fun filled vacation. Cause right. I was just in my <laughs> fucking fields. I was on this plane. Like I'm sick of ginger ale and some tissues, please. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. It is not. Gotta, it's not a story to read when you're around other people. <laughs> yeah, Lance, you had a great yeah. conversation with him too. I, I do want to praise that. I know you're not going to shamelessly plug, but I'll do it for you. Your 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 conversation with DWJ was really great. Listening to you, kind of like champion this murder falcon obviously just not just murder falcon but do a power bomb and everything you guys talked about it was fun listening to you guys talk and you definitely did a way better job at not fanboying than when i did when i <laughs> talked to him <laughs> are you sure because i feel like i was giving him compliments every two seconds 
it happens. He's good at he's good at he's like he's one of the nicest people. Everyone listening right now, if you're mm-hmm. if you haven't ever heard of Daniel Warren Johnson or even heard him speak, he's one of the nicest people in the industry, which is also just attributes to his incredible talent for the medium as well. So if you ever have a chance to listen to him, please do. And and he's one of those creators that you help you like when you meet him or if you hear him talk, you almost just want to support him just because of who he is. But then you see what he does and you're like, oh, okay, I could just be a fan too, you know? Yeah, well said. Jake, what about you? I'm going to toss that question to you. Well, I'm going to go with something I had not discovered until this year, and it was at the recommendation of my co-host, Jesus, and it was One Punch Man. It was a, a show he had said, you've never seen this? And I said, no, I don't really, I, I, I guess I, I don't watch a lot of television, so I don't discover a lot. I, I will watch the things that, like, are really high level, you know, the things that catch everybody's eye, the things you have to watch, otherwise you'll be shunned at the water cooler kind of thing. But <laughs> when it came to this, I, I mean, One Punch Man came out of nowhere. It was recommended to me by Jesus. And seriously, it is probably top five favorite things I did this year was spend time watching that show. I love mm. the main character. And I it, the song, again, that first One opening punch! song. <laughs> yeah, that's, that intro Hangs goes in your head. hard. Oh, really yeah. hard. And they, I love how they make fun of the the superheroes in it, and and the whole shebang. It it's so much fun. I highly recommend it to anybody. And honestly, it is one of the reasons why I've started watching other anime shows. I've not watched any anime prior to this, and now I'm watching Chainsaw Man. And I went back and rewatched, or not rewatched. I watched Attack on Titan. And cool. I'm just exploring that world now because of this one show. Jake, have, have you watched uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? No. That needs to be your next watch. Well, I, Trust, me. Trust me. Trust <laughs> me. I'm trying, guys. <laughs> uh, you know, I Jake, also, I wanna, if I can just quickly it. recommend something. It's a small indie anime. You probably haven't heard of it, but Dragon Ball Z, if you can have a second, just check it out as well. Um, that's where what, all my 600 anime episodes. Love. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's you have one Dragon Ball, then Dragon Ball Z, then Dragon Ball Kai, and then Dragon Ball, I think, Super, Super. is what's on right now. Yeah. So, yeah, do all that real quick. No big deal. Oh, I did watch about... Avatar as well. The, 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 oh, yeah. Last the Airbender. Mm. Uh, I, I did watch that as, uh, as well, and that was great. You can definitely skip the movie on that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that the, the thing about having so many um, other friends that, you know, also comic podcasts or that, that are in the space is that you are never without homework. You are never without like, you know, <laughs> a blank slate. Exactly. A blank slate of, of media to consume. Uh, Chris, what about you? Did you discover anything this year or, or revisit anything this year? Yeah, so I have two picks here. They're both movies, uh, and I feel really, really bad about missing both when they initially came out. Number one, I think it's getting a lot of love right now, as it should, but Prisoners over uh, from... It's Denis Villeneuve as the director. It came out in 2013. Yeah. Uh, it's an incredible movie. I don't know how in the hell I missed it when it first came out, but Denis Villeneuve, we all know, directed Blade, for, Blade, Blade Runner 2049, Dune, Arrival, Sicario, Enemy. Hmm. He's going he's gonna to be directing the new Dune as well. Uh, it stars Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal, Paul Dano, Viola Davis, and Terrence Howard. And I have a description here, but I almost don't want to tell you what it is about because I didn't know anything going into it. I just saw that it was on Netflix here not too long ago. The actual scenario was: I'm a bartender. I came I came home at work. I came home from work at like 2 a.m. and I'm just scrolling through Netflix, something to turn on while I go to sleep, I'm trying to decompress from the night. And I see Prisoners, and I'm, it was just came up on Netflix. And I was like, well, I'll just watch 30 minutes and then come back tomorrow and watch it again. Don't do that, guys, because I stayed up until 5 a.m. watching this movie. I couldn't, I couldn't get away from it. It's so good. Uh, definitely put that on your list if you haven't seen it. Uh, and like I said, it is currently on Netflix. So that's Ooh, one. I have, I have not seen this movie, but I remember the trailer being so intense. I'm going to watch it now. Yes, definitely check it out. Intense. I actually avoided watching this movie as a parent. Uh, any movie that has anything to do with kidnapping – really like puts me on edge so i avoided mm-hmm. it because i also had heard all about it but man when i did sit down to watch it i suddenly regretted having not watched this movie so i would recommend it as well even for those who are parents <laughs> yeah uh the second one i wanted to recommend and also it's one that i just watched a couple days ago also on netflix 
is uh, 2015's Burnt, which is directed by John Wells. This is, um, you know, it stars Bradley Cooper. Okay, just listen to this cast, guys. Okay, I feel so stupid for not having seen this already. Bradley Cooper, Daniel Bruhl, uh, Sienna Miller, Emma Thompson, Uma Thurman, Alicia Vikander, Omar Sy, and it's got a brief appearance of a very young Lily James in it as well. It just, I don't know how this missed me because I've been obsessed with Bradley Cooper since he's been around, you know, like I'm a very hetero man, but if Bradley Cooper came up and tried to kiss me, I don't know if I'd stop him. If I'm being honest, I'm just letting you guys know right now. <laughs> I um, slip a tongue. I slip tongue. <laughs> yeah. Just a little, just a little tongue I, ju- yeah. for the experience. Guys, tongue. It's for, it's yeah, for science. Tongue. Okay. I just, so I can say that I did it. All right. Uh, and you know, John Wells, he is an acclaimed producer of television. He produced, he was the executive producer on ER, the West wing, the company man, animal kingdom. And he actually was the creator of Shameless over on um, Showtime. So hmm. uh, I'll give you a brief description because this one's not as deep as uh, Prisoners. So Adam Jones is a chef who destroyed his career with drugs and diva behavior. He cleans up and returns to London determined to redeem himself by spearheading a top restaurant that can gain three Michelin stars, which is kind of just like, you know, the top whatever. Mm-hmm. So uh, highly recommend that. It is, uh, it's kind of... It's not as good as its ensemble. It's not as good as its director. It's definitely something that you can be doing a thing and also watch, but I do think it's worth seeking out. Okay. Chris, I kid you not, I watched this movie for the first time yesterday. Me too. Damn. <laughs> the synergy, like. man. We, yeah, go. we got some energy. All right. Uh, mine, I, I got two that I'll share. And I think this, my first one kind of falls, maybe closer in line with, with what Jake said about One Punch Man. Um, and that is that I, this year I finished all 28 volumes of the iconic, uh, Lone Wolf and Cub manga series. I had started it in November, 2021, just kind of on, on a whim. I was on Comixology one, one day and I didn't feel like reading like, uh, like American comics. I just wanted to try something completely different. And usually around like the fall, usually like around like when it gets cold, you know, in Florida, which is whatever, 40 degrees. I feel like manga is just elevated. Something about the black and white artwork, it just kind of puts me in a certain mood. And I had wanted to just like, I was looking at classic manga. I was like, man, what are some of the most classic, highly revered manga out there that I just need to read? And Lone Wolf and Cub was, you know, of course on that list. And um, I started in, in November of 2021. And this year was like full on, like every night I tried to read one volume. And then it got to a point where I ran out of, uh, physical books to to get because I started getting into like the numbers where it was hard to find and I had to like buy some digitally and then buy like some uh, you know here and there it just became like a fun you know kind of like quest right like sometimes you're like yeah this is kind of nice that I can't find it that easy I mean I could just go on eBay and boom but it kind of presented a challenge in the whole experience but when I say Lone Wolf and Cub is one if it's one of the best comic book experiences I've I've ever had it is uh for those that that aren't familiar it's it's about a disgraced uh shonen executor named uh, ogami ito who um gets disgraced uh by this uh, rival clan and uh they murder his wife he they he gets rid of his title and he decides to walk the path of vengeance with his very infant child who he gives the option at a very young age of like hey look either you're gonna join me on this path to revenge and kind of losing your soul or you know i'll 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 let you join your mother in in the afterlife, and you know the kid chooses the, that path for what it's worth. Um, so it's 28 volumes of like this epic, like I mean, it is an epic of them on this journey of going through towns and you know um, just picking up a, a mission. It's if you watch the the Mandalorian, I mean, it is heavily influenced by the Mandalorian. If you ever read uh, Frank Miller's Ronin, I mean, it's it's a big influence on him. But it is well worth just reading on your own. We're talking about a series. That came out in 1970 and ended in 1976. I read it for the first time in 2021, and it it still holds up. It is such a beautiful, moving series. And I remember getting to the last volume, ordering it off of eBay. I think there was only like one or two, and I made a day. I mean, I'm sure we've all had moments where it's like the last issue of a series or, you know, you're getting to that penultimate uh, uh, or that kind of climax of whatever media that you're at, and you're like, I'm making this a day. I remember making that a day. I mean, I had like a nice drink. I sat on the porch on the hammock. Sun was going down. I was like, now I'm ready. Like I avoided reading it for a week because I was like, not ready. I am ready. ready (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So Lone Wolf and Cub was something that this year um, I really got to experience and enjoy. And I'm so glad I got to do that. 
And um, runner up uh, at number two is kind of a, a vague statement, but DC Black Label. This was the year I decided to just dive all the way into DC's Black Label category or, or offerings. So I've read like Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, uh, Adam Strange, uh, the, the Lonely City, and, and some of the other uh, Black Label rogues uh, that came out this year. And I got to say, I think DC, I think Black Label is the best thing to have happened to DC in a long time. I think this was like the shot in the arm that company needed in the sense of offering um, kind of their version of, of uh, indie and, uh, uh, you know, alternative stories. And, and Chris, you know, you mentioned the, the Vertigo um, comment earlier. I believe the old editor-in-chief or one of the higher-ups of, of Vertigo was the one that started Black Label. So it makes sense that it's got that appeal where it's like limited stories, a little more on the adult side, a little more edgier, a little more headier. Um, and I, I got to say, like, it kind of goes against my brand because on, on the show, I'm known as the Marvel guy. I grew up reading Marvel comics. I will, you know, I bleed that crimson for that crimson M. But DC Black Label has, I've read way more DC this year than I've probably read ever. And it's mainly because Black Label is just, it appeals to me. Like it's kind of outside of that continuity. And it offers like those, those stories that I'm looking for that scratches that itch. And I kind of wish Marvel... I'm surprised Marvel hasn't like copycatted that and done their own, you know, brought back the maxi series or whatever adult oriented um, line. But DC Black Label this year has been phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And Tom King should continue to uh, write more Black Label stuff. It's kind of interesting that DC Black Label, <clears throat> why it exists, you know, because on one hand, DC was in such a desperate spot within their publication that they needed to give their creators almost like ultimate control to create whatever they want and it worked so for you know if marvel dc we know you're listening right now we <laughs> just hear my words really quick give your creators control forget continuity for the most part or at least create a separate thing like what what you were saying there botter in terms of black label just let the guys do what they want more times than not you're gonna get a better product that's my that's my opinion on that facts facts Agreed. i co-sign that big time all right, gents. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take us on a a side road here. Um, we've we've talked about the media that we love, the comic books that we've enjoyed this year, the movies, etc. Um, and and you know, Chris was talking to Lance about uh, self indulging, uh, self promotion, and self plug. Look, that is something I'm the master of on this damn show. All right, I love a good hyping. You know, your own self up. Um, and and you know, it, it's safe to say too that. I enjoy all of your podcasts. I respect the work that you guys put into it. You know, week in, week out, you guys are, are much like me where I don't think, I think I could count on one hand how many weeks I probably missed this year in, in terms of like um, putting out a podcast. So I want to take a time, I want to take a chance to spotlight the, the hard work that we've all put in when it comes to like this comic book podcast, you know, biosphere and things like that. So let's go ahead and, and you know, talk a little bit and, and hype ourselves up. I want to hear from each of you, what's been the best played uh, or, you know, best received episode of your podcast this year. Uh, maybe this, uh, you know, just by stats, maybe like, you know, this has been our highest played episode. And then I want to hear what's been your personal favorite one. So maybe there's a difference where it's like, this wasn't our best played, but for me personally, it's been the best one, whether that be a favorite interview or maybe a favorite topic or even a milestone that you hit. Uh, let's take some time to, to, you know, to brag about our accomplishments. And uh, I want, uh, Chris, how about you kick us off, man? Yeah, so our most listened episode of 2022 was, it wasn't a surprise, to be honest. It was our interview with Jason Aaron, episode 75, and we had a chance to sit down with uh, one of my favorite writers of all time. Uh, very similar, again, to Lance and his conversation with Daniel Warren Johnson. That is, that is Jason Aaron to me. He is the, the creator that I have loved longer and, and, and enjoyed his work across the board more than probably any other creator I, I know in the comics medium. And... Uh, I try my best to not fanboy. I think I did a pretty good job. If you go and listen to that interview, I think I was pretty normal because Jason Aaron is a very, it, you know, if you read his stuff, you probably think, or if you even just see a photo of him, you think, oh, this guy's a rock star. He's like a total badass. He's a really soft-spoken, warm individual who just like loves comics. And you can tell when he talks about it and he's not afraid to tell you exactly what he thinks about a thing, uh, but just in a really like tactful way. I just, I love that about him. I love that about his, his art. Uh, so it was awesome talking to him again. That was episode 75. Uh, my favorite though, my favorite episode of this year is probably again, not a big surprise. Uh, it was our episode 100. We, we celebrate our 100th episode this, this year, not too long ago, actually a couple, like last month, I want to say, and we kind of treated it almost to like a centurion, a centurion, is that how you say that centurion episode? Centennial. You see, 
I, I don't know exactly how you say it. I, it's, it's, you see it on like Friends. It's on The Office. It's basically just a recap of like the best, you know, the best of the best of whatever time frame you're, you're kind of up to at that point. And it was cool. It was really cool to put together a stinger of everyone in this group right here and creators. We always like to ask creators when they come on for a stinger for the, for the Oblivion Bar, put all that together. You guys, every single one of you all contributed to sending in a message into the 100, which I am grateful and, and eternally appreciative of. Uh, and it was just, it really turned out really well. And Aaron and I, we initially wanted to do that in person, but it didn't work out, unfortunately. Uh, but still, I go back and listen to that episode. I have a couple times now, and I'm just really, really proud of it. Uh, and it's cool to think back to April of 2020 and thinking, oh, we're going to start this show, and we're just going to shout into the void. And if we c collect one or two people that want to listen on a weekly basis, awesome. And now we're sitting at, you know, 13,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, we have over, we have close to a thousand subscribers across all platforms. And it's just one of those things where I just can't believe that we even have, we're in this position where we can actually like talk to people like you guys and, and have a community like this. It really is. Uh, it's a, it's an honor for me. Um, and then kind of lastly, my favorite interview was of course, Jason Aaron. I, I that's probably not a big surprise, but also I want to quickly shout out uh, our interview with Sweeney Boo, who we're actually going to have on episode 105 at the end of the year. That was really fun as well. Almost like Sweeney Boo, if you're not familiar, she's going to be the new artist on Harley Quinn going into 2023 with Teeny Howard. I met her at New York Comic Con. She's great. Uh, she's one of the coolest people I've ever met in the industry. And our conversation was just really fun because we were already friends. You know, we we had done a couple whatnot shows together at New York Comic Con, so we already had a rapport. And it was just really, honestly, it was just like talking. It was like it was like two friends talking where. One friend is really talented and one friend is less talented, but kind of asks fun questions sometimes. Like it's just one of those relationships and I, I'm, I'm really excited to premiere that to everybody. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the Oblivion Bar 2022 right there. That's good stuff. Uh, and thank you for an idea to put on my resume. Less talented friend that asks really good questions though. I think, that, <laughs> I think that'll work. All right, Jake, tell us about Spec Tales this year. Uh, so this was our first full year, so we are a year and a half into the show, and, uh, you know, honestly, we started the year, we started the show, it was just myself and Jesus, and the people we would have on were literally just comic collector friends, like literal nobodies. They were just people that we were friends with through Instagram, and we had them on. But the point of the show is to, as you said earlier, we ask people, what's your grail tale? And the way that we say it is everybody has that book that means more to them than anything else mm -hmm. uh, or, or that collectible. And what's the story behind it? And we actually figured out that that question really translates also very well to creators because even our favorite creators out there, they have that item. That what you know, they'll tell you, I'm not really a collector, but I have this piece of artwork that I would never let anybody have. It's mine. And they have that. So we, we really enjoyed asking that question. My favorite, excuse me, the number one episode for listens uh, is from March of this year, actually, uh, for the, our, the existence of our entire show. It's from March, and it's our episode with Mark Wade. Uh, oh. This episode got, it, it still re regularly gets a lot of listens. And Mark, you know, the best thing I can say about him, I really enjoyed it. He actually did his homework before he came on the show. He had listened to some episodes and you could just tell that he had, which was a lot of fun. And then when he came on, he played our game. We always ask everybody for something recently that they've read. And we also ask people to close the show with speculation, which when it comes to creators is constantly hard because we ask them no matter what, but they always... They always say, I don't know. I don't know how to play this game. I don't know how to speculate on a comic. Not Mark Wade. Mark hmm. Wade knew exactly what he was doing. And he ended up dropping news on our show that actually hit the industry wire. I mean, it actually made waves throughout. We were getting articles from CBR and that that he broke the news that they were going to do an irredeemable show. Uh, and he did that on our show. He didn't have to do that on our show. It's, Mark Wade could have just, he knew he could have waited. He did it for us. And I thought that was really, really fun and cool. And that episode still gets tons of plays. Um, my absolute Damn, favorite, my, my favorite episode, which I'm sitting amongst multiple people who have been on our show. And I, I have to say, I am not choosing either of you. 
um, Chris or, or Lance. <laughs> I was expecting choice. you to say your, your episode with the Oblivion Bar. That's what I was hoping you'd say. I really could. I, I have so much fun on all of the episodes. I really he's do. He's saying it with his eyes. He's saying it with his eyes, Chris. <laughs> I have to I have to give the credit for my most favorite episode because it is still an episode that I, I still did not see it coming laughing as hard. I still can go back and laugh. It, it was the episode we did literally the week before Mark Wade. And the fun part was we set up an episode with our good friend Chris Donaldson who is just a collector. He's just a guy he who's on Instagram who's a friend of ours and he – we set him up before Mark Wade. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. We're like, okay, Mark Wade, that's going to be a high-stress week before leading up to that interview. Let's do a really easy mm-hmm. interview before that so I don't have to stress about it. So we set up with a good friend <laughs> the week before, and then he delivered the funniest freaking episode we've ever had where I still will chuckle about lines that Chris said because he just, his delivery, uh, and it's the episode, it's back in uh, end of February, beginning of March, but Chris Donaldson is the episode, and I swear, if you listen to that episode, you will laugh your ass off. Chris is the funniest human we've ever had on the show, and it, it's not even a competition. So I, those, I, those are the ones that I, I got to call out. It's a Strong episode. list. Strong list, Jake. Man, and, and Jake, I, I got to give it, you and Jesus credit, man. You guys, um, I, I think, you know, respectfully being the young buck, the young bucks, I think, uh, of the group, man, you guys have been on, on a roll out the gate. Um, I mean, it, it feels like every single time you guys drop an episode, I'm I'm always looking forward to who the guest will be. Because lately, yeah, I mean, you guys have been on a fucking roll. I mean, you guys got Thank Tom Brevoort. Uh, uh, I say his last Tom name. Brevoort. Tom Brevoort. Yep. Brevoort. Brevoort. You know, I'm just fun. like, damn, they went with the editor route? Smart. You got the EC, uh, I'm sorry, the Creepy Comics Magazine owner, which I thought was, I was so happy for you guys. Like, come on, that's that's a fucking, that's a grail catch right there, mm-hmm. right? Like It that, really was. We still talk to yeah. Dan a lot. We just, uh, he he got our, our Christmas card and he emailed us. And the best <laughs> part about Dan is whenever he emails us, his emails always come with loads of images and photos of like collecting years past. Cool. Like he had a, a spreadsheet from the 1970s from when he was a kid about the books he had collected and how much he paid for them, which by the way, he got the first 12 issues of Fantastic Four for less than a hundred dollars. Just say, <laughs> damn, <Jesus. laughs> mic drop, nice. All right, Lance, let's go to you, man. Tell us about comic book keepers this year. Yeah, uh, our most listened to or most played episode is actually the first episode we dropped of the year. So that's going to be our Red Hood episode, which we had our, our good buddy Josh from Four Nerds by Nerds on, and it has probably my favorite what if segment we've ever done. Because we we developed this this story or or um, Josh really developed the story for it where it was, um, what if, oh what oh my gosh what was the what if it was about like what if uh, Jason Todd tried to steal the wheels from another hero's car rather than the Batmobile, hmm. and yeah it was really it was really fun that's and so, interesting yeah so Josh tells a story and, and it ends it ends up with. Uh, uh, R- Jason being um, Venom become like becomes a part of Jason. The symbiote mm. like latches on to Jason Todd, and it's a really fun segment. But we did like voice acting for it. Like Josh did mod- voice modulation, and then I put like some background music in it. And it's it's probably the most quote unquote cinematic thing we've ever done on the podcast. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then like it, my favorite episode of this year is, is going to be my interview with Daniel Warren Johnson. Again, like I, I can't hype it up enough. It was, it was like a dream scenario, like dream guest to have on the show. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but I, I have, I have a lot of fun with a, like everyone that comes on the show. Cause it's just a blast to talk about comics. Um, another interview that I loved this year was my, um, chat with Ryan Parrott at San Diego, San Diego comic con, because I'm a massive Power Ranger fan, and Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover was like a dream come true for me. I was I was a very happy '90s kid when that <laughs> dropped, uh, and so getting to chat with him was just a blast. He again, like just like Daniel Ryan, is just a, a super nice person, just incredibly fun to talk to. Um, and then I think the other thing you asked was like, what was like the milestone you hit for the podcast? Um, 
And for me, that's just going to be getting press for San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con. Like being able to go there for the first time since I was in high school was so much fun. And just being able to walk the floor and it, it was a blast, like dream yeah. come true. As a media, I mean, you had the media badge. I mean, that, that's a different type of brag right there. Yeah, yeah. It, it was great. But we get that through uh, the Geekly Grind. Like, we didn't get that through the podcast. But still, like, being able to go as press was just, it, again, dream come true. Dream scenario. Like, as Good a stuff. kid, I was like, I would love to go to Comic-Con and be able to go behind the scenes and talk with creators and mm -hmm. all those things. And this, this last year, I got to do it. Good stuff. Uh, th th those are goals right there, Lance. Yeah. All right, for the short box, our best played episode this year was episode 348, which was our Jim Lee artist spotlight. So as the name would suggest, it was an episode completely dedicated to talking about his career and celebrating his vast contributions and, and work in comics. We kind of went, did a very kind of a uh, quick beat um, summary of his uh, entire career and what he's done and, you know, why he's, you know, top dog at DC, but um, one of our best played episodes, and it kind of goes to show that, um, you know, just in general, our, some of our best played episodes are those artist spotlights where even though we're not interviewing, you know, the said artists, you know, we're taking the time and, um, you know, and, and really kind of showing our respect and um, admiration for the people that create comic books. I think it's easy to celebrate the characters and the stories and, you know, the books that come out weekly, but, you know, taking the opportunity to, whether the um, person is, is there in front of you or not, to celebrate, you know, like the artists and, and writers and creators that make these books and, you know, have kind of <clears throat> resonated with you in that way, I think is important. And it's been great to see that the, um, the, the reception has been there. So that's been our best played episode, a whole episode dedicated to talking about Jim Lee and how awesome he is. Um, our second best played was an interview episode with Jim Rugg uh, earlier this year when we had him on for the second time to talk about Hulk grand design. Um, you know, and it felt, and I, at this point, actually, I, I think I've interviewed Jim Rugg twice this year. Now I think about it. He came to Jacksonville recently for a um, zine fest uh, that happened here in Jackson. I got to um, host the panel, but that uh, Hulk grand design episode was, you know, second best played episode. Um, you know, Jim is an awesome guy, super friendly very knowledgeable, easygoing, and, you know, much like you guys probably experienced. Once you've had someone on once on the show, the second time is a little challenging from a prep perspective because you're like, all right, what can I ask? Unless they've got a, a new project, what can I ask? And, uh, you know, how can I dive deeper into, like, the cracks that I, I didn't get into before? So it was fun to be able to have, like, a fresh conversation with them and, and that be um, received so well. Uh and, and since Chris is, is on and Lance as well, since all three of us participated in, in the uh, Unite the Seven event um, last year in 2021, I, I, will, I do want to mention that to this day, our Green Lantern episode, so our contribution to the uh, crossover event, is one of the, our top five best played episodes. So I want to thank you guys for getting us involved in that and, you know, ha giving us a reason to talk about fucking Jon Stewart for an entire episode. Uh, I think Super, my I think Superman episode our, was our top one for a while, too, in 2021. Bad. Yeah. Same for our yeah, Flash yeah. episode. Yeah, we definitely, I, I, we, we got to do it again for 2023. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to doing more crossovers. But my personal favorite episode of the Short Box this year is a tie between, um, and this one's technically, I mean, I made it an episode, uh, so I'm just going to call it that, but it was 361. It was the audio that I recorded during my panel interview with Jonathan Hickman and Scotty Young when I was in uh, Heroes Con. They let me host that panel between those two uh, comic giants and I recorded the audio and I got to release it as an episode. It was definitely a, a very well-received episode, but just personally speaking, I mean, I could stop at Jonathan Hickman, but the fact that I also got Scott Young uh, in the convo mm -hmm. is like the cherry on top. I really did not have to do much. They were great sports. Those two could have talked even longer. The fact that they were friends in real life made that such a breeze. And um, Jonathan Hickman is someone that... If you've been listening to this show for even a, a year, you know that that name comes out of my mouth as, as much as I can. And I'm so glad to see that he's going to be doing a Marvel project again. And um, just being able to, to you know, be on that stage with, with two dudes I highly respect in comics. Um, so goals, man. I was, I was really proud of that. Um, and then I think just a case of recency bias. Uh, our, our recent uh, holiday special episode, man. Um, I haven't seen my co. I mean, I've, I record with Ed every Sunday. He lives in town, but Ashley lives about forty-five minutes out. She's now pregnant. Um, by the time this episode comes out, it'll probably be a week or two before she um, 
uh, has her baby boy. And then Cesar, you know, he's a dad now. He lives like almost an hour out. So it's just been a more than a year since I've seen, you know, my friends, you know, and, and we celebrated uh, 10 years of the short box this month. And uh, I used to see them every week, like every Sunday at 1 p.m. We'd all gather in my small, whether, whether it was the kitchen or then I upgraded the studio. But um, the fact that they came down for, uh, you know, a little, you know, uh, improv kind of impromptu Christmas party and record an episode. Last week's episode is, is definitely a highlight for me this year. So nice. good. sounds like a good year of podcasting for all of us. That's what I like to hear. All right, gents, uh, last question I've got, and I, I promise to go ahead and wrap this up, but we've spent all this time talking about 2022, the, the best of moments and, and what we've enjoyed about uh, this passing year. I, I want to look to the future, right, into 2023. What, is there any pop culture or media, whether it be movie, comics, uh, television, uh, anime, whatever, whatever it may be, coming out in 2023 that you're looking forward to the most? Uh, Jake, I'm going to go to you to kick us off. Yeah, uh, I will be brief, but I have a, so uh, Animal Castle, whatever comes next for that, I am very excited about. I am also very excited, hopeful, I don't even know if it's coming or not, but probably my favorite comic uh, for the last decade, and it just came out two years ago, was Ultra Mega. And I oh, am man. so, so, so hopeful <laughs> to get more of that please in 2023. I, I just really hope that, yeah. that more of that comes out uh, because, God, I can't do without it. I need it. Uh, I go back and read that series uh, multiple times just this year. And then lastly, for television, One Punch Man. I, oh, I yeah. keep hearing rumors we're going to get it. I think it's going to come out in 2023. I really hope so uh, because if it doesn't, I, I guess uh, you know the, the consolation prize will be uh, more um, of a uh, uh, – Gosh, dang it. Now I'm not blanking. What is the, the Amazon show? Not Irredeemable. Why did I have that second? Invincible? Episode? Invincible. Invincible. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, Invincible, which I love the first season. I need to go revisit that first season. Oh, no, yeah. That, that's going to be mandatory homework when that, when that gets announced. Mandatory. Good pick. Dude, Ultra Mega. Damn, Jake, you, you, you've you been on a roll, man. You've had some when we had a, picks. When we had Daniel Warren Johnson on the show, he said his biggest influence is James Herron. So he yeah. said that he's the reason mm -hmm. why he got into comics and, and does his style. Oh, Obviously their styles that. are very similar. Uh, and Big yeah, time. he's, he attributes a lot of his, uh, what he does now to James and his work. Good stuff. Chris, how about you going to take that question then? What, what yeah. you look forward to in 2023? I'm going to go, I'm going to be brief as well. Uh, cause I have a lot. <laughs> so, uh, Spider-Man across the spider verse. I think we're all pretty excited, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Super excited about that. Uh, I saw the trailer for that going into avatar, the way of water. And I was like, if this movie is on par with like Thor Love and Thunder, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> you know, like I just, I need it to be better, guys. I need to be, I need it to yeah. be better. <laughs> Please let um, uh, Jonathan May, at least let Jonathan Major's part be like, you know, right. the shit, you know? Yes. Yep. Uh, 65, which actually just got a trailer. It's being directed by Sean Beck and, uh, excuse me, Scott Beck and stars Adam Driver. It's basically like Jurassic Park, but like in the, like, I don't, it's not Jurassic the Park. That the future make... past. It's the future. Yeah, it's, it's the days it's not, of yeah. future past. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like if Kylo Ren was deserted on the lost, you know, the land of lost or whatever. Like it, it just looks really, really good. I'm excited for a new dinosaur centric story. That's not Jurassic Park related. So um, that, that'll come out March 10th. And then I understand that some people have issues with some of the voice casting. Okay, I get it. But I'm so excited about Super Mario Bros. in April. It just looks Bring really, it. really good, guys. It looks awesome. It I, I, I watched it again. I watched the trailer for it during Avatar. And I just got goosebumps from the music to the wahoo. You know, there's Jake. There's where you're from. And, like, all the things. Like, it just really, <laughs> it, I'm really excited for it. And I, I just, Illumination I, really honestly doesn't, very, doesn't do wrong very often. So I think yeah. they're in good hands with Super Mario World. Um, uh, and then for comics, I have one Silver Surfer Ghost Light. Everyone knows, as you can see here, mm -hmm. the big chromed out guy next to me here, giant fan of Silver Surfer, also tattoo here as well. Um, so Ghost Light is a five issue miniseries written by Jay Holtman and art by Sean Damian Hill, covers by Ken Lashley, and that comes out February first. I don't know anything about the story, it, but it's it's Silver Surfer, and he doesn't get very many solo series, so I'm excited. So definitely excited for that. Good stuff. That's a good list. Um, Lance, what about you, man? What would you look forward to in 2023? I think Chris hit like half of my list. In I know. His, so I'll just, <laughs> uh, Sorry. 
<laughs> no, you're you good. Just, you're you could, good. You could just say you could just say ditto. Just say ditto yeah. and and yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just again highlighting. Across, I'm so looking forward to Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. The first one is such a phenomenal film. It was the best superhero film of the, the year that came out. So I'm very hopeful for what we get from this one. Uh, as far as other movies, uh, Creed three. Uh, Jonathan Majors <laughs> looks like a freaking house in that. Do not movie. take your wives or girlfriends to see that movie. Don't do it. Yeah, you're just going to yeah. send yourself up for a fight. All right. Just letting you know. <laughs> you're either setting yourself up for a fight or a very, uh, very arduous uh, gym time. You're going to be in the right. gym working extra hard yeah. that you don't really need to. Yeah. And then Guardians 3. Uh, the, yeah. So the finale for our Guardian story with James Gunn. Can't wait to see what we get there. Uh, as far as comics go. Uh, Static Season 1 was probably one of my favorite comics of 2021, and I cannot wait for Static. Uh, I think it's called Shadows of uh, Shadows of Dakota. So that's from Vida Ayala and Nicholas Draper Ivy. They are a powerhouse duo. If you have not read Static Season 1, that comic is perfection. It, mm. it brings back Static so well. The, the voice of Static is perfect. A Virgil is perfect. The family dynamic is beautiful but the visuals are just next level it, it it oh my gosh it's nothing it's it's unlike anything else that comes out because the visuals are done in such a unique way strongly recommend and then is of course a, is that dennis cohen sorry i didn't mean to interrupt but is that dennis cohen doing the static book, season one or who, who was that on art if I no season one that. was it was still vita ayala and nicholas oh, okay Ivey. okay gotcha. yeah all right yeah that same duo is coming back for this run it's it's perfection it's so good um and then of course uh, they announced uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, Series 2 crossover. Uh, uh, so we have Ryan Parrott returning to write, but now we have Dan Mora is oh. doing covers and interiors. Uh, God bless that, it's, man. I don't know how Dan Mora does it. He he does so much across the board. But yeah, though the, I am so hyped for next year. There's so much in store to watch and read, and I can't wait. I'm really conflicted when it comes to Dan Mora. Like, I'm rooting for him. I want more stuff. But I also don't want him to get so big that all he that he realizes, you know what? I can make the same amount of money just doing covers and right. I don't have to do interiors, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, keep on going, Dan Mora, but don't become that big. At New York Comic Con, they had Dan Mora and Peach Momoko right next to each other. And I was like, who planned this? Why would you put these two <laughs> right next to each other on the floor? They're, they're, those two lines were madness. Oof. I don't know what they were thinking. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, uh, I cannot believe I didn't have Into the Spider Verse two on my list. I think it's because I've just I, I it's I feel like that's kind of like a gimme, and I've just mm. the poster came out today, um, and the trailer was recent, so maybe it's just uh, oversight on my part. But looking forward to that. Really looking forward to Invincible season two because season one was just so well done, such a great um, uh, homage. Well, not really a homage, but it paid such great respect to the source material. And I was so happy to see so many friends of mine that weren't really interested in comics use that as their springboard into this medium. So looking forward to um, Invincible Season 2. Um, but as far as... Uh, so movies. Dune Part 2 comes out uh, next year. Loved Dune Part 1. Um, I know it was a little slow for a lot of people and, you know, just a long movie. Spice. But I... Was very, <laughs> <laughs> I was just loved... Uh, I It was... Just the world building and the way that movie looked, I was an instant fan. So look forward to part two. Hopefully it really picks up and, um, you know, gets a little crazier and more action, but I'm here for it. Uh, John Wick, I think this will be, what, the fourth installment? I believe the last uh, installment of John Wick. That trailer that came out uh, over the summer, they, it's just like, how do they still main, uh, how do they still find the opportunity to push the cool envelope, you know, and the choreography and the style. It's like, Two they, words. if they just can Donnie Yen. <laughs> <laughs> like that's all you got to do to make yeah. your movie cooler. True. Just True. put Donnie Yen in there. You're right. Uh, so John wick, uh, doing part two. Uh, uh, I'll also hop on the train with Lance about guardians of the galaxy. I'm uh, it's James Gunn. You know, I mean, come on. Yep. Mm -hmm. he, he gave me, he gave us peacemaker. He gave us suicide squad. He gave us the other guardians. Let's see what he does to pull on my emotional heartstrings for the goodbye. Um, also look forward to uh, Mandalorian Season 3. I think it comes back in 2023. Uh, it has been probably my favorite Star Wars properties to date. Andor is definitely a close second now, but Mandalorian is, is still in its own stratosphere. As far as comics, kind of continuing on the whole DC love. Um, 2023, we'll see the Dawn of DC initiative that DC is doing. So 20 new titles uh, come 2023. 
Um, a, a lot of very interesting titles and creative um, pairings. You've got Mark Wade and our guy Dan Mora doing a Shazam book, which should be a lot of fucking fun. Um, Tom King, who, which I got to say, this year has been my... I will t- walk back everything I've ever said about Tom King, specifically his <laughs> Batman run, because this dude has just not done me wrong at all. So he's doing a Penguin book, a book about the Penguin uh, among this initiative. And I'm also excited to see um, uh, Danger Street uh, continue on into 2023. Issue one came out this month um, and it continues on next year. I'm all for this Tom King train that I'm on. Uh, and, and honorable mention for comics. Tom McFarlane is teaming up with Mike Del Mundo for a Spawn 3 issue series called Unwanted Violence. Not that excited about Todd McFarlane taking writing duties. I Hopefully he's got a ghostwriter, <laughs> someone that actually can write really good. But Mike Del Mundo, though, man, sign me up. Whether that dude's doing covers or interiors, especially interiors, I'm here for it, and it's fucking Spawn. So looking forward to that. And with that being said, uh, gents, um, this has been a, a, a lot of fun. Went on much longer than than I thought, but uh, you know, to be expected, especially when you've got uh, all, especially when you got a, a show with four other, you know, four podcast hosts in general. The thing we're gonna do is fucking talk, and that's what we did today. Well, anything other than think. brief. <laughs> <laughs> Brevity, what's that? Yeah, yeah. Not, not on this show. So thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedules to join me. I'm looking forward to uh, your your individual and respective. Uh, end of year episodes I'll, I'll be checking those out i know that you guys will be tackling uh, other categories that we didn't touch on today and probably even going uh deeper into your list and i want to reiterate to the uh short box nation that each uh that each of uh, you guys uh you know the oblivion bar spec tales uh comic book keepers you guys are, are good in my book i truly respect what y'all contribute to the space and the work that y'all put in week in after week you know every week you guys are dropping new episodes like like we do over here at the short box and, and I know, and as someone that, you know, knows what it's like behind the scenes and how the sausage is made, I tip my hat to you guys. And, and you know, thank you guys so much for putting out quality content, but also elevating other shows in the, in the community. You know, we've got, um, the listeners don't see it, but, you know, we've got our own United Nations of, of comic podcasts uh, on Twitter and, and you know, a, a group chats, and we're all supportive, and, and I, it's a blessing to be a part of that. Um, so I, I want to, one last question for you guys, and that's really just to self-promote one more time. Please tell uh, the Short Box Nation and our listeners what y'all all got going on in your respective shows, what episodes they can look forward to, and where they can find y'all on the interwebs. Uh, Jake, take that for me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as for 2023, Spectales doesn't have any official interviews announced or anything like that. And actually, that's one of the things that we tend to do is not really announce too many of our guests. Uh, that is something that... Like uh, Guido Sanchez, who's a good friend, he is of the the Deer Watchers podcast. He is one of our most dedicated listeners. And at one point, I tried to tell him an upcoming guest that we had, and he was like, "No, no, no, no. That's what I like about your show. I know I don't know who I'm walking into every Wednesday." So we don't generally announce that, even if we had. Uh, we have a lot of high goals for this upcoming year in terms of a lot of our a lot of guests that we want to have on, and just milestones we want to hit. So we're looking forward to that, but you can gar- we can guarantee every single week in 2023, you are going to get a new grail tale, whether that is from a collector uh, who is you know nobody off the street kind of thing, or that is going to be from one of your favorite comic book creators. We are going the route of trying to get a, a story from everybody. So that's, that's Spec Tales next year. There we go. Big shout out to Guido of the, of, of the Deer Watchers podcast. Um, I, I was on their show uh, last month, and I got to meet uh, uh, him and his co-host for the first time, and they were they were awesome. And um, you know, one of my highlights was Guido became a Patreon subscriber of ours like an hour after I got done. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Whoa, I really must have did good on, as a co-host. Um, so, yeah, big shout-outs to Guido. And, um, Jake, I wish I sounded as cool as you when it came to, like, yeah, you'll just have to kind of figure out, you know, who, who we got coming on the show next. <laughs> the only reason I can't, we don't promote, you know, who we got coming up next is I'm usually scrambling, like, what the fuck am I dropping this week? <laughs> Let me send. Okay, we're talking about Jim Lee this week again, bites. everybody. Come back. We're, gonna, we're talking <laughs> about Jim Lee. <laughs> Our third you know, time this our, month. Yeah, our artist spotlight episodes are, are the cheat code. It's like, let's talk about Tom McFarlane. We don't have him on the show, but we can talk about him. <laughs> yeah. Spoilers, everybody. Todd's not here. 
<laughs> <laughs> he was waiting in the wing for like two hours of us just talking today. Oh, shit. Chris, what about you, man? What's the Bolivian bar you got going on uh, next year? All righty. So Bolivian bar 2023. Uh, we're, we, Aaron and I have been calling this hopefully our level up year where we just take everything to the next level. Uh, we've got mm-hmm. a lot of cool things in the works. Uh, first, I want to say subscribe. Uh, we're on all the normal stuff, oblivionbarpodcast.com, uh, at Oblivion Bar Pod based on everyone's social media. But um, <clears throat> dream guest, uh, a couple guests that we have in the, you know, on the wings. We said Sweeney Boo, uh, episode 105. We're also currently talking to Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, who wrote the recent King the Conqueror book that came out, nice. I think, uh, earlier this year. They're also both writing uh, Captain America, uh, Sentinel of Liberty, and I'm forgetting what the name of the Steve Rogers one, but they're writing both of them. Um, they're just doing incredible work. I talked to them at New York Comic Con. They're great dudes. Excited to have them on the show. And this is our first time talking about this. I actually, I don't know if you heard the gulp through my mic here, but uh, we're talking to one Brian K. Vaughn, possibly, to come onto the show. <laughs> what? So... Uh, <laughs> Do you want me Speaking to delete? Of- do you want me? Do you want me to delete all the saga talk we had? At the yeah, <laughs> uh, it's not official. I don't want to. Wanna, Chris. Yeah, don't. I don't want to. Uh, this. I actually. I'm going to knock. You guys hear me knocking on wood right now. I just want to knock on wood. It is not official, but we are talking to them to possibly come on the show. He doesn't Hell do yeah, a lot of interviews, so uh, that would be incredible. He's my favorite author of all time. So oh, that's comics, awesome. novels, everything. So would love to have him on the show, but we'll see. Another cool thing i can't really fully say this yet it's not in ink yet but we if everyone who listens to the oblivion bar if you've heard of us we have a strong partnership with whatnot and uh we have something really cool happening with them uh i i don't i can't say too much because again it's not real yet but uh we're currently talking to an artist for something for a secret project so keep oh, that on, in the wings yeah. uh if you stuck around this long if you stuck around for two hours i'm just gonna drop all the oblivion bar fire right now uh and then i guess my real goal with the Oblivion Bar and just with our community is just to continue to grow this podcast organically, have great, interesting conversations with, you know, with Aaron, with our guests, with our special co-hosts like you guys, when you come on the show, I want to work with all three of you guys at some point in 2023 and do an episode together, whether it be on your show or mine. Um, and, and again, just continue to build this community of nerdy podcasts. You know, the uh, you, body, you kind of alluded to it there just a moment ago. It is so cool that we have so many different podcasts that tackle different corners of nerdum, and we mm-hmm. all do different things, but we're all kind of talking about similar stuff, and it's just really cool to have that over on, you know, even though we're not, I don't think many of us are big fans of the owner. Uh, we love Twitter for that, at least, you know, in terms of like <laughs> what it's provided in terms of community. Amen. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it for the Oblivion Bar. Hell yeah. And Lance, I'm, I'm sorry for having you follow up to Chris. I mean, he, he's over here dropping <laughs> I'm sorry. heat bombs and, and dropping the mic. No, um, best of luck to all of that, Chris. I'm, I will anxiously be looking forward to, to all of that. Lance, tell us about Comic Book Keepers, man. What you got going on next year? Well, after hearing what Chris said, the Comic Book Keepers is officially done. We are no longer recording any episodes. Close up shop. Uh, They're like... Instead, we have decided to become the Oblivion Bar cheerleaders. All right, we're just gonna uh, promote. <laughs> we're a their podcast show and that talks them. about the Oblivion Bar podcast. <laughs> this is this is <laughs> this is a good time to admit that we're absolving the comic book keepers. Uh, we bought them out. <laughs> they are now known as the Oblivion wired. Bar keepers. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can also listen to Oblivion Bar podcast on the Comic Book Keepers uh, feed. Yeah. They're just going to go ahead and copy and paste. Yeah. We're just sharing RSS feeds. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah, so Comic Book Keepers, we're going to keep giving those character deep dives that we started the podcast doing. We'll continue to do our like top five episodes, the What Are You Reading, where we bring people on just to talk about what they've read that week. Just fun conversation. Um, and then we'll try and keep doing creator interviews. Uh, we don't tend to do them too often. I tend... I normally just use the podcast to talk to creators that I just want to talk to. I'm like, hey, I have this podcast. Come and promote your things. I just want to have conversations with them. And they just happen to be recorded. Uh, a goal that I would want to set is, and this, there's nothing groundwork laid for this at all, but I would love to get Walter Simonson onto the podcast. Uh, I just recently found the other hardcovers for his Ragnarok run so now i have that entire run so i would love to have him come on and talk about that but i also kind of same thing with chris i look forward to bringing on all those other creators like podcasters on our show i look forward to have all three of you on our show again next year and continue to talk nerdy things about comics like we do because it's just so much fun it it's it 
it was something that we started in 2020 when we had way too much time on our hands for I can't remember why. Um, <laughs> but What's going it, on? I it was, ah, but it was just like a mental, like safe space. Like it, it gave like meaning to the days that did, never ended. And I look forward to just continuing the hobby and uh, growing the relationships that we've built and like just just having fun together. Well said, Lance. Well said. It was very heartfelt. Gents, I appreciate you all so much. To our listeners, look, this was a, this was a little uh, a bonus-sized episode. I mean, you kind of got a long episode for the holiday special last week. And you know what? We treated you to another uh, bonus-sized episode this year. But it makes sense, right? Like, it's, it's us saying goodbye to 2022. So, of course, we weren't going to leave no stone unturned. And hopefully, we've accomplished that, all right? If, if you are listening and you're like, damn, how did they not mention XYZ? Or I want to champion this. Join in on the conversation, all right? Send us an email to read at theshortboxjacks at gmail.com. We love when you guys join the conversation and sharing in the con- uh, sharing with your thoughts and, and recommendations. Besides that, like I said, this is the last uh, short box episode of the year. If this wasn't enough for you, if two plus hours was not enough comic book podcast content for you, look, I've got some friends I could recommend, all right? And I, I think they did a pretty good job self-promoting. But just in case you didn't catch any of those links, you can check the episode show notes. I have a link to all of uh, these great shows and these great guys uh, in these show notes to make it easy on yourselves. And make sure that you check out their year in episodes. It should be all dropped around the same time, all right? And what else are you going to do? You got some PTO. Hopefully you're, hopefully you're enjoying some time off before getting revved up for the new year. Besides that, I wanted to go ahead and thank all of you for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your 2022 and, and, you know, best of luck for a fresh start in the new year. Like I love to say, please continue to make mine and yours short box. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.